Hi, everybody. Welcome to FNS Wrestling Podcast, episode 149. Back down in the basement on a Saturday morning. Weather's beautiful. We were out last night. Even the banters, you can't escape wrestling talk this week. Because what did we do last night? Um, finished AW. And we did, but we also went to beautiful Beaverton, Ontario. Beautiful Beaverton, yeah. To watch... Uh... <clears throat> so it's Battle Arts is the facility or company. Yeah, that's Santino's thing. It is Santino Impact Morales. Impact Wrestling Superstar. And it is somehow Impact Wrestling affiliated as well. well yeah, okay, I guess especially because Santino's there now. Yes, and I guess I was talking... Of course, uh, I happen to know the person that was taking the tickets and working the door, of course, of course which was strange. Um, and they were saying that, yes, Santino actually trains on Wednesday nights. He's there every Wednesday in Beaverton, which is mm-hmm. interesting because it's not close, right? So, But what would you say? How, did, how would you say the show was last night? It was all right. I think it's kind of like because it's partially like also it's an academy. So there's also like it's them kind of learning on the fly. It's like... <laughs> You could tell some were very, very new to wrestling. It's like right? low-budget 2.0, because 2.0 was, let's be honest, a pretty similar thing at some times. Yes, and it was like a, you're getting people that are new and training, and that's what yeah. this felt like, right? Especially the Battle Royal. The, there was one woman in the Battle Royal, and she won, and she was really, really bad. Yeah, but, I don't um, know why she. I I joked that she won or she was gonna win because she can't. She didn't know. She wouldn't know how to like get eliminated. And that, lo and behold, and they had um a character. I thought he reminded me of Raven, right? Who was sitting in the crowd, acting bored and wearing like two pairs of sunglasses, kind of. Yeah, uh, I, he kept like he he was definitely keeping kayfabe when he was uh autographing oh, yeah. the kids. Like he was like just not could be bothered. And then he um so he was actually sitting beside us as because he was sitting in different spots in the crowd. And for the battle royal, he was getting ready to run in and interfere with whoever the guy is he's feuding with, I guess. But he was literally in the front row calling spots for that woman, like telling her what to do. Oh, really? Because I could hear him because I was one seat away from him, right? With no one in between us. And he was saying like, try and eliminate him. Try Because she was just like kicking the same guy in the corner a million times. Because I think a basic front kick was the only thing she could do. I was more like a, her like kind of around the side. Yeah. So anyways, was he weird. was like, try and throw him out. Try and throw him out, right? Just trying to like help her from ringside so anyways i yeah. thought i mean it's never going to any indie show is kind of fun i find but Some i think it was good for the money i don't think it compares to we usually go to great canadian wrestling right and the value for that because it's more like veteran people who've probably been you know doing indie feds all over ontario and maybe yeah. further for a while whereas this is more like hey here's some of our trainees and some people who actually have been wrestling a while so I would say the quality of GCW matches are better. Although um, um, they had better belts. They did have much better belts and a better concession stand too. They really? had more options oh, right, for yeah. okay, food yeah. and stuff there. So it's, I don't know, we'll probably go back and check it out. Apparently they do show, shows every month. I don't think we'll be there that often, but um, I wouldn't mind going back and check it out. It yeah, I, I would not. Like a 40 minute drive, right? So yeah, it wasn't bad. too bad. No. Yeah. Um, anything else exciting happened to us this week? Um, not really for me. It was a short week at school and no, work, so that was, was nice. Pretty uneventful. It was pretty uneventful. I'm trying um, to think. I'm not. I'm blanking. Your brother's summer league basketball starts tomorrow morning, so we have to drive like an hour and a bit for him to play at nine o'clock tomorrow, and then yeah. eleven o'clock. So mm-hmm. you will not see us in the morning. Nice. My plan today is to get outside and tinker with the pool, get it cleaned up, ready to get into. Nice. You got any plans today? You work. Uh, you work tomorrow. Yeah, um, like four or nine, I guess. Oh, we're, 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 well, wait, are we going to watch Saudi? We can watch thing? some of it. I don't want right. to watch it live because I want to be able to cherry pick probably. Okay. But yeah, if you want to watch that well, this afternoon. Well, if AJ and Rollins is the opener, I want to watch that. Yeah, probably. we can do that. Then I also have watched a little bit there. of, what was it, Under Siege that I was checking out? It was. I watched the opener with Magnus beating uh, Kenny King. Magnus. Decent. Sorry. <laughs> wow. That wasn't even. You sometimes they do it on purpose. That was not all. Nick Aldis. He beat Kenny King probably like nine minutes or something. It was fine. And then I, didn't I watched. Know that was on the card. Um, Giselle Shaw, Naomi. Sorry, Trinity was pretty good. And the tag match with uh, Subculture. Yeah, Subculture and ABC was very good. So yeah. that's about. I think all I've seen. And then Masha Slamovich and um, Killer Kelly were having a brawl through. They don't have a match. They were just brawling through the crowd and then. Killer Kelly tried to choke her with a chain or something and till it was broken up. But it was looking okay. Like yeah. I don't know. I'll I may finish watching it. I may not. I heard Macklin. Could have gone. 
could have gone. It act is it in it's it was funny because they keep referring to London, London, right? And you're like, oh yeah, that London, not yeah. London. No, England. not not like cool London, the London in Canada. Are you saying London, Ontario is not cool? I mean, I can't think of anything notable to say. You've there. been there. I know I've been there. I can't. You ate brunch of... with a chocolate fountain. You guys loved it. Can't think of any like notable reason I've been there. No, we were visiting friends and we ate breakfast in a weird not weird just a random place that had a chocolate fountain. i remember that and you yeah. were and you and your brother were big fans yeah but yeah well, of that. course anyways i don't know we should probably talk about some wrestling because we're mm -hmm. going to be adding in previews of all three shows right three, yeah the one show i'm two hoping shows we'll be today. like just in time to technically predict before night champions it's at one our we're, time yeah yeah we should get there well it'll be close anyway so don't get spoiled don't be cheating on your predictions yeah so we'll predict, well, i've already locked them in we'll predict nxt show um AEW's and main roster, Saudi, Blood Money, whatever it's called. I had champions, um, Dollar Nothing, and Battleground. There you go. We'll talk about all of those in addition to our usual stuff. So let's get into the usual stuff, which is segment one, where we talk about some of the week's news and rumors. I was telling you, I do not have a ton of news this week. There didn't seem to be anything super major, but as always, I do have ratings. So we can start there. NXT this week averaged 578,000 viewers, which is down 2.5%, and earned a 0.16 in the key demographic, up 14.3%. And they, again, guess what they went head-to-head -head with? What's it been for weeks Basketball. and weeks now? Basketball and... Something else. Hockey. Yeah, I was going to say hockey. So conference final games, Eastern Conference and NBA Western in NHL. So stiff competition, decent numbers, I guess? I don't know. I don't even know anymore. I just always tell you every week mm -hmm. what they are dynamite averaged 846,000 viewers up 3.9 percent and earned a 0.32 in the key demo which is up 14.3 they only went up against hockey which would be the lesser of those two stealing ratings right if you think basketball or hockey in the states yeah. up here different probably down there basketball would be stiffer competition than hockey. i would also think like that because i don't like either of them but basketball you, is slightly a little better it's slightly less offensive yeah nice well, just a little yeah uh what do you have for uh us? the first one i have was nick khan saying that wwe is open to adding a third hour to smackdown oh, i know i heard that that's terrifying that's that would prevent me from watching it I, that's exactly what i was gonna say i would go from a person who if I heard it had been good the last few weeks, maybe checking it out to like, no, three hours is daunting. Like I can't, I don't think I can do it. Well, that's like plus NXT. That's eight hours. They have a television a week. Right. It's almost like they're trying to like one up or keep pace with AEW because they keep adding because they're now at what? Five. Yeah. So you got that's like, WWE already has five. They do. Like, but you got to have gonna... more. They're gonna, or, I mean, they already have actually, what is it, seven then? Yeah. But, like, if you want to go across three shows, yes. AW across three shows would have five. So, right. They have five on two shows. WWE wins, yeah. I guess. I don't know. Um, Our favorite topic, CM Punk, the current is he or is he not coming back seems to be he is, right? Um, And that it's going to be at the debut of Collision, what we initially reported. And then there was like, no, no, apparently he's not. Maybe he is. Dave Meltzer, who knows how accurate he is. He's reporting that a final meeting between Punk and Tony Khan, quote, went well, and that there are a number of other issues worked out, including part of the agreement apparently he's saying is that nobody will talk about the after, sorry, the brawl thing after All Out last year. That brawl that is out. a unmentional, unmentionable, apparently. Well, that sounds horrible. So, I, yeah, it's, I was listening to someone else talk about it today, I don't remember who, to give them credit, but that Collision feels like it's going to be the the place for people who don't fit in like they can't get along or that want are causing problems sort of thing like all the like maybe even ftr heads over there because dax's podcast ruffled some feathers right and they They're seem to be punk that, people uh, i know he's done with it but that there's a segment what, of fans that don't love ftr because of that why and that, what and anyone else that's unhappy with their time so andrada you complained you're on collision um who's the other one miro you complained you're gonna be on collision like that sort of thing it's where the unhappy people or yeah that's i'm not loving collision because it feels like i don't know if that's true it's like i don't know obviously we like, haven't seen it but it's not that doesn't it, that it's not that it feels unnecessary because like I, they do need more time because they have such a big roster but yeah. it's this is like it needs to be like an actual thing like the fact that if it is just like people who are have issues so it's just like they go there then doesn't really like 
because most people are fine i would assume yes. so most people aren't gonna have to I go there hope. right like it collision only works if it's like an actual like either an actual brand split or just like everyone going on mm-hmm. both because then like well, obviously not everyone but like you know what i mean because yeah. if it's just like people who like punk or people have issues then like it's not really i feel like it kind of won't be much of an outlet for people who need that more tv time yes because which, it... which should be like i don't know like the whole point of it being like the punk show that kind of just nullifies it a bit like if that makes sense and if you have that many people who are unhappy or causing issues or whatever to support a roster why do you still have them there yeah like why are you employing 15 or 20 i don't know what would be on it right like who are unhappy or have some issues like just don't have them there would be my suggestion but yeah i don't know the whole collision thing's kind of muddy like i don't I don't really care about Knox. It's just weird. I don't. And I was telling you that about it, it's just really weird. The taping that's in Hamilton, which is about an hour and a quarter from us, I guess, is not selling tickets well. So we could still. I checked yesterday. Like good seats would be like forty eight bucks. There's like nothing for the show yet. There's no one announced. There's like you don't know really who's there. And you're you just matches doing one in Toronto. What the week before, right? No. So I don't know if it's like if Southern Ontario is a hot enough market to support. You know what I mean? And Forbidden Door. One that's outside of Toronto, too, which is where the whatever three million people live now. Because Hamilton's, not that it's far from Toronto, but it's not Toronto. Yeah. And I know a lot of Toronto people that, yeah. like, don't have vehicles and stuff when right. they live in the city. So mm-hmm. it's not as easy as hopping in a car and driving to Hamilton, you yeah. know? So anyways, yeah. I don't know. I'm The jury, I guess, is still out on Collision, right? But we'll see. Yeah, it's a really weird situation. Just, like, I wish it was just a normal show. There's so many, like, caveats to it with the punk right. thing. Like, yes. I don't... Just why well, can't just be another show for you people to go on? You and, know, it's just like and the speculation is because they indeed announced that the first episode's in Chicago that that's like the that's the that seals it right that it's definitely punk coming back. So it seems like all indications are, mm-hmm. and we'll see what happens. Anyways, unfortunately, what else you got for us? Um, I'll do this one because it's kind of related. Do that um, one then. AEW is reportedly pushing Orange Cassidy harder as they're leveling up the international title, so it can be a focal point of Collision. Oh, really? Well, I, I would agree they are pushing him harder. I would agree they are leveling up the title, and we'll talk about that I don't want to have collision, but... though. I like it the way it is. I do, too. I think, that's, I think it's pretty perfect. Yeah, and, and that on Dynamite, we're pretty much guaranteed an entertaining match almost every week, it feels like. Definitely I don't know. this week. Yeah, absolutely this week. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I, I don't want it to move, because I just don't want it to move to the show I'm less likely to watch, right? Because I can't guarantee At least I'm not gonna... exclusively. I don't. Yeah, like as I guess if it's both, it doesn't really matter. But I would prefer it on Dynamite just because it's a really good thing. I agree. And I mean, I would argue you should keep the international title on TBS and you move the TNT title to Collision because Collision's actually on TNT. Whoa, whoa, that makes too much sense. So like too much logic. Well, and then if you want to have Wardlow have the title, I don't care. Exactly. <laughs> he can Go wrestle ahead. CM Punk again. I don't. I don't care. Right. Um, the only thing I had, or no, I have two more things, I guess. One is the 18 of the 21 participants in the Battle Royal were confirmed. When you looked today, was it still 18 or did they have it, all of I them? I counted it. It was 21. It was all 20. So I don't know who I'm missing from this because I checked a couple days ago. So obviously. Um, I'll pull up my graphic and I'll kind of cross-reference. Orange Cassidy, obviously. Yeah. Keith Lee. I saw that. Swerve. Yeah. Big Bill. Mm-hmm. Lee Moriarty. Yeah. Trent Beretta. Uh, yes. Tony Nice. Yes. Ari Davari. Uh-huh. Josh Woods, mm-hmm. Penta, yes, Phoenix, Bandito. I don't know if I saw Josh Woods, but uh, sorry, Phoenix, Bandito, Butcher, yeah, Blade, I saw those. Sabian, mm-hmm. Cage, Dustin Rhodes. I just, I, just, it's weird. I have everyone on here except Josh Woods. So I don't want to maybe, Wait, but you... you said you had twenty. So what, okay, so what I'll gives? I'll rhyme it off and we'll see oh, the boy. differences. <laughs> okay, good. Just, uh, baby, fun. we'll see. Um, so do you get Butcher and Blade? Yes. Okay. Uh, you said Dustin Rhodes, Bandito. You didn't get Commander. No. Kip Cole Sabian. Mandare, please. Kip, Kip Sabian. Yes, I got him. Uh, Juice Robinson. No. So there's a di- couple um, different. Yeah. So uh, so I have, you to get Brian Cage. Yep. Okay. I don't remember what he said. So yeah, I have Butcher and Blade, Dustin Rhodes, Bandito, Best Friends, Lucha Bros. Um, I have Neeson Davari, but no Josh Woods for some reason. This is just a graphic that yeah. they have. Uh, Cage and Swerve, uh, Moriarty, Morrissey, uh, both Bullet Club Gold guys, Sabian, Commander, Keith Lee, Starks. Do you get Stark? No. no. Oh, weird. And Cassidy. Yeah. This is, I'm confused. I won't say, I guess we'll save my prediction, but I was about I guess, to say who I think's winning, but I, I guess won't. some of the bigger ones are probably the same, but I don't know. I, yeah, I got my pick too. Yep. But. 
so I don't know. I'm not a huge battle royal person, but sometimes they'll find ways to entertain me, so we can be hopeful. Only when there's a battle royal title. That's Seems like a good right opportunity here. to have Big Bill be a monster and eliminate a bunch of people. Or, you know, make Keith Lee look good or something. Imagine. Something crazy like that. Crazy. Yep. What else do you have? I have two more stories. Um, Cody Rhodes versus Gunther is an early consideration for WrestleMania 40 main event. Yeah. So that's kind of cool. That would be cool. But then I have another thing that's, they're reportedly still interested in booking Cody versus Roman rematch in the future, which is good. Yes. Because then Cody could, I guess, face Gunther. But, and that's still the plan, like, True. for either this year or next year. And so that could make Cody face Gunther if Gunther wins the Rumble. I don't know, crazy. <laughs> um, but to me, it's interesting because in their infinite wisdom, WWE drafted them to separate brands. Right. Right? Yep. And that is a big issue because then you would think he can't win the title. And so I... I they just, know the brand split means nothing. They I just, just thought of, I guess he move. could have money in the bank. But yeah. then the the only thing I could think of was, the only feasible way I saw it working was if he wins the Rumble again, faces Roman Mania again, and then w- actually wins that time. I um, guess it's possible. And I don't know if I want that. I guess it's a could, lot of agains. I guess you could do the money in the bank and then, mm-hmm. but like, you can not just give him a normal title win. Like, yeah, no, I, I don't really know if I want a, a thousand plus day reign ending to a money in the bank cash in because we just hit a thousand right today yeah Yeah. well congrats roman yeah like i don't i think that would be kind of a lame way to end it like Mm -hmm. i wouldn't want a theory to cash i mean obviously that's theory but like yeah i don't think i'd want anyone to cash in that because that's just kind of kind of lame yeah it should be a prolonged build to something like yeah uh, like they could have done i mean they could have done it already yeah they, i mean well, yeah, i know like three thousand days is cool and i mean if they were so close i understand wanting to do that but like i don't know they could have just at least they could have drafted cody to smackdown and make it easier on themselves to like build to a SummerSlam match i think it's then, gonna be another thousand days because they invented a title just to not have to have roman the most sec- give it's, them up it's a secondary title it's it is. it's full uh what else do i have couple injuries is all i have dakota kai is to undergo surgery for a torn acl and apparently it happened in the same match that um Liv morgan got hurt and that dakota kai hurt herself trying to protect the already injured interesting Liv morgan on some it was sort funny of i move. saw a post from like bailey or whatever and like her and you they're saying like, we'll miss you dakota or something like that. And i was like did dakota kai die <laughs> no but, like just surgery just, just an injury so it could be anything from six months to a year, and it's just they're saying uh, it looked like damage control were entering early phases of a split, right, with the way things sort of went down with EO in her match. So Now I don't know how that works. Right, like how does, do we sort of pause that, or do they go in a different direction? So too bad for Dakota, because we quite like her, although she's looked bad in some stuff too. So sometimes I think she looks awesome, and then other times I'm like, she doesn't look like she knows what yeah. she's doing. So anyways, um. She'll come back. She'll get a, a nice reaction when she comes back. So hopefully it goes well for her. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, yeah. Uh, so Will and Nightingale became the inaugural New Japan yeah, Strong she did. Women's Champion. Yeah. So that's cool. But um, apparently Marseille's Monet, the person she beat, FK Sasha Banks, uh, was supposed to win that. Right. But then she got an ankle injury, which brought about an abrupt end and a changed outcome. Yeah, I'm happy for Willow, like, regardless of how she got it. Right? Yeah, that's good because, for her. Because uh, it's good for her. But. Unfor- I haven't heard of you. The like, I don't know how long. I know Manet's out. I'm for. pretty sure Mercedes just signed an extended thing with New Japan and Stardom, yeah. though. So I think at least she'll be around there for a while. She will for sure. I just don't know how long. Yeah, she's no, out I, of I, I didn't. I didn't see how long she's out for. And my last one's an injury as well. Mark Davis of Aussie Open. Um, who did we talk about news that they're? That uh, was one of my things. Yeah, they're, so they're yeah now they're all elite, which is awesome. They got for signed. Us. That was that's that was really cool. I was surprised. I saw that before we watched it. I was like. I was, I don't know, I was, that kind of came too. out of nowhere. Because I, mean, I hadn't heard that they were, like, free agents or looking to leave or whatever, so it's I awesome. It's AEW snub WWE right there. As people who really enjoy Aussie Open, um, that's mm, great news for us. Yeah, uh, Osprey. Unfortunately, Mark Davis, the powerhouse of Aussie Open, had arthroscopic surgery on his knee for a torn meniscus. And so, yeah, they vacated both the New Japan and IWGP titles, right? Because um, they couldn't make their already advertised defenses. Did you hear who's... Both titles are up for grabs at Dominion. Do you know who it is? Evil and Yujiro Takahashi taken on Goto and Yoshihashi. Like for both titles? It, yeah, for both. So it doesn't thrill me that much. Not that I'm up on New Japan, Japan by any means, but I know who all of those people are, and it doesn't really I, <laughs> excite me. I think me. I do, yeah. It doesn't move the needle for me. But anyways, I'm Yujiro not up on it. Yujiro is... Wait. 
Yujiro Takahashi. Yeah, he's cool. The one from Bullet Club. Uh, I believe so. He's like the... not not the junior heavyweight guy. No. Okay, so yeah, I'm thinking of the right one. Like he had the Tokyo Pimps move. And he oh he... no, I that don't guy. think it is that one. Is it Hiromu? It's like... Yujiro. Oh yeah, Yujiro. You're right. Yujiro, like he was, he had the team with um. I think Naito, yeah. like a while back. I just don't love Evil or Goto at this point. I don't um, Goto, I don't, I don't think Yoshihashi's going to, and he's all right. Yeah, anyways. It's not, neither of those are banner teams. No. So Ozzy Open signed, but then got half of them got hurt. So do you have any other news? I am done. It kind of sucks for them. That's like New Japan. So that's one of the best teams they have. I, I agree. They're one of the best teams anywhere, I think, Yeah. In my opinion. Because um, I'm done. Uh, my last one was, yeah, Jordan Grace has reportedly left Impact falling under siege yes. and her contract expiring. I, I'm i assuming she lost to Perazzo on that card and the stip was she would never be able to face Perazzo again. And she did on the part of under siege. I watched, she had a little promo where it's like, where to kind of like, what do I do if I don't beat her sort of thing? Yeah, so, leave. Right. I'm going home or whatever the Take classic my is. my ball and go so, home. So interesting to see where she'll go. She's cool in the ring and like obviously quite different from a lot of people because she's just a massive powerhouse not very good speaking but i'm sure she can work pretty much wherever she wants to at this point yeah she'll could definitely, show up at nxt she'll definitely end up somewhere in nxt or... could be for a little bit i think because they'll yeah. be like oh we need to work on her character and promos which is true no doubt but anyways mm. all right well we've got a busy show lined up so we should we probably does. Get into it. We'll talk about first this week's, I guess it was Wednesday night's episode of AEW Dynamite. All right, let's uh, start talking about Dynamite. Starts off strong in both of our opinions, I'm pretty sure. Mm -hmm. Starts off pretty hot with Orange Cassidy defending the international championship against kyle fletcher yes uh, of Open. we just talked about him quite a bit on his own obviously with his partner injured so he gets a singles match here which mm -hmm. i was pretty happy to see i like yeah. kyle fletcher yeah he came really high like yeah, i think cassie <laughs> was like taking off his jacket or something i don't know he was in the corner fletcher just charged at him and smashed him in the face with an insiguri in the corner that just looked that looked really sick right it, off the bat it just, was a yeah it looked great we it watched just, it twice yeah because you missed it the first time i was just like that was a big reaction for me. Cause I yeah, was... I thought I had time to like get my note ready, whatever. As and then no, boom, he just right smashed away. him right in the face, and then followed the brain buster for two. That that was a nice looking brain buster. That was a good like. I'm a sucker for a brain buster. That's a good way. um if you're gonna do like a right away near fall. That's yeah, not yes. a bad way to do it. Yeah, very believable like eight second win or whatever yeah. you know possibly. Potential. But no. Um, there's a suicide dive from Fletcher. Uh, he was talking to the crowd on the turnbuckles, and then kind of shoved him off, and he uh, kind of like flipped over, hitting his back off the apron. Uh, there's a beach break on the outside from Cassidy. Uh, later on, Fletcher had a stalling suplex in the ring for two. Uh, Cassidy got some nice height on a stun dog millionaire and then spiked Fletcher with uh, the tilt world d It looked two. great, yeah. He sold that, like, perfectly. Uh, Fletcher caught Cassidy out of a diamond cross by and then spun him into a sick Michinoku driver for two. Like a was... spinning, leaping Mitsunoku driver. That's how you do it. It was it looked pretty awesome. crazy looking. Um, Fletcher hit that corner in Sigiri kind of thing again. Um, the same thing from the start of the match, but then when he went for the Brain Buster again, Cassidy had to scout and hit a Brain Buster of his own, and they were both down for a bit. They beat the ref's count, and then Cassidy was hitting the Lazy Strikes. Then he hit a real super kick and a Michinoku driver of his own for two. Uh, Fletcher rolled through on the pin, lifts him up, kind of deadlift, uh, into a tombstone, uh, hits a tombstone pile driver, but then um, he held on and then got back up and hit a spinning tombstone yeah. for a near fall. So a pair of tombstones there. And I know people are going to complain like two, two, two pile drivers should pin anyone. That's I don't care, man. This is fun stuff for me. We're not those people, right? Like mm -hmm. bring on all the high impact moves. I don't care. Yeah, no, I don't have an issue. That, that, was, that was really cool too. And I was surprised he was able to even do that. Uh, there's an avalanche Michinoku driver from Fletcher for another near fall. Uh, he went for a hammerlock power driver. He uses it as his finisher. He calls Grimstone, I think is what they said. They did. Uh, but Cassidy counters and spikes Fletcher with the DDT. And then we, when the finish, uh, Fletcher went for it again. But then Cassidy countered again with a roll-up, and he got away with the win. Uh, I, You're going to say the same. I thought this match was awesome. Fletcher looked fantastic in this, and... I talked about it in the moment, right? There's something about the way he wrestles that I really enjoy. It's like this steady pace, 
with everything looking crisp, right? Like strikes look good, kicks look good, and then a lot of high impact stuff. He's not working a million miles an hour, but I really like it. Everything looks really clean and forceful. He looked, I thought he looked dominant in this, and Cassidy is like mastering that role of like the resilient underdog, right? He keeps winning all these matches that he shouldn't be winning because he's nursing so many injuries from having so many mm -hmm. matches back yeah. to back to back, right? So it's a story that's really, really working for me. Yeah, um, so this I think it's gotten better over time because I wasn't really feeling the early parts of his reign. Yeah, then I quite like it. It's like, oh, he was selling his hand for a couple of weeks. Oh, then it's a knee. Then it's now it's probably going to be his back, right? So this was cool offense and cool counters with Cassidy getting little counters in and quick little flurries. And the finish keeps, I think, helps Fletcher, right? Because it wasn't one of Cassidy's finishing moves necessarily that got the win. So um, I, this has been a great title run for Cassidy. I care... So much more, I wrote all Atlantic title, but it's now the international, right? Then the TNT, and I know you agree with me, yeah, right? It's, it's just got such a, a better presentation now. like Right, and I'm not a super mega Orange Cassidy fan, to be honest, but I think this has been perfect for him. And when he does finally lose, it'll be a big deal, right? Because he has added to the prestige of this title by defending it so many times and having mm -hmm. so many good matches. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I thought it was a great opener. I was expecting something good, but I think this exceeded my expectations a bit. Um, I love Ozzy Open, but Fletcher really surprised me here because I thought he looked phenomenal. He did. I figured it'd be good, but like I was kind of iffy on it just because like I mean, we've never seen one of them on their own. Right. So, um, I was a little like unsure about it, but he managed to impress here. It was awesome. I was instantly in when he just came charging and casting, just smashed him right away because he nailed him. Uh, it was just from strength to strength for Fletcher. Um, literally in some spots. Mm -hmm. Um. He really got the time to shine here, and you could maybe complain that Cassie didn't get enough in here, and he only got like little flurries. But, but that's I think the that, story. That worked fine, and it benefits the story as yeah. well. I think it works for him barely making it with the win. Uh, Fletcher doesn't look at all weak taking a loss here. It looked he he looked awesome here. He was just hitting a bunch of crazy awesome stuff. Um, impressive debut like this reminds me of. Tyler Russ. Oh, my, oh, you did tell me your notes yeah. took a turn to Tyler Russ. I'm disappointed they never got him in for like an international title match. I think that would yeah. have been cool because he would have been able to dissect at Cassidy a decent bit. Or, yep. um, you know, they brought in Thatcher. Remember, like, I, I think he could have been brought in for Danielson's run of matches. That would have been cool. That, that would have been, I was, that would have worked. I was re watching some good old Tyler Russ. That would have been cool. <laughs> I don't, he just, he's just dropped off the face of the Biggest earth. Biggest Tyler Russ fan, maybe, in the world. Yeah, right here. I love Tyler Russ. Tyler Russ is awesome. Uh, I rewatched his debut a couple days ago. It's still sick, kind of similar vibes. With Champa, yeah, the yeah, Champa that match, match. Yeah, was, that was that was cool, surprisingly good. Yeah. Anyways, this was sick. Um, Fletcher looks awesome here, and match of the night for me. I think you too. Uh, yeah, definitely not, not far and away the match of the night. Um, I mean, depending on how long Davis is out, Fletcher can clearly survive on yep, his own for a he bit. Can. I don't. I wouldn't mind him like coming in. Do the in Dante there. Martin get all kinds of hype on a little bit of a singles run. He didn't win a ton of matches along the way either, but no. he got lots of exposure. And Neither does great, Takesha, so. and I love Takesha. Right, exactly. So I don't know what else Fletcher can do, but like, you can just kind of give him random TV matches. As long as he stays on Dynamite, I'm good, because really, I'm not going to see him on Rampage, probably. No. Um, And, like, I, he can't really challenge for another title, because there's tag titles, trio titles doesn't work, and I don't really want him to face Wardlow. Right, cause no. that's just a death sentence. Yes. Um, Anywho... Next is Ricardo Starks it was. speaking with Renee. It was. Uh, so she asked what's going on for the DQ, and Ricky says people think he lost his cool or acted out of emotion, but he didn't. Uh, and he says every single time he gets beat down by the two of them. And he says if nobody will do anything about it, then he'll take matters into his own hands. And he says he's refocusing on the blackjack. Battle Royal at double or nothing, and what he can do to two, he can do to 20, and he's going to take the title. And then he gets jumped by Juice Robinson, and then Jay White joins in, and they Juice beat him Juice Robinson's down. a maniac. Yeah. It was, yeah, it was funny. Juice was just <laughs> yelling at him the whole time and yeah. screaming and yelling at him. Ricky! Yeah. It yeah. Was, it was so funny. He is funny. Uh, and then when he took over the being again, Jay White was mocking his pose. Like, uh, for a little segment, I thought this was pretty enjoyable just because... They are uh, entertaining. But both of those guys were really entertaining here. Uh, Juice is a really wacky dude but he's funny he reminds me of like jack black was a wrestler i know he was not but like, Libre, actually, but like, like a wrestler he's just so over the top it does make me laugh and i really like jay white i just and when he gets screen time it's good i just think he should be doing something more important than yeah this, I, I th i'm hoping it's just like a starter thing 
but yeah, this was super quick, and I thought it was entertaining. I think in the near future, maybe he could be on to bigger things, but uh, I'll, 100%. I'll talk about that later. And they need to sort of elevate Juice, too, as yeah. more than just a lackey. I, I feel wouldn't like. hate... I don't, if they develop more, they could be an interesting tag they team. They could. But I agree. And I that's a way to get um, sort of Juice elevated, I think, too. I would almost rather, though, you get Juice a different partner, and you have Black... Uh, yes. It's not Black, Bull, Bullet Club, Gold as a faction. Because yes. like, I, I, I'd like these guys together, but I'd like it to feel like a Bring faction. Bring in Hikaleo? <laughs> <laughs> no thank you well actually jay white uh was facing be careful because you said so many out. things last night at that indie show that immediately happened right you either the well actually i would either jinx things or right. uh like hikaleo will never show up in AEW. but yeah. actually he already did hikaleo won't come back we'll never yeah hopefully <laughs> hikaleo won't defeat orange Cassidy for the international Imagine. championship and show up as a mystery 22nd entrant in the blackjack battle royal can't 22 yeah. in a blackjack that'd be cheating no, it's um, what's it? I forget. What busted, it's bust. Yeah, he'll be the bust, and he'll the, bust the whole thing. He might. Yeah, I forgot, and I know because I played blackjack on GTA, but yes, I forgot what it was called. Busted. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, next we get a promo from Jungle Boy. Um, he was talking about his journey to make it to the Double Nothing main event, and he says the ring has given him a purpose and lets him live the life that he chooses to live. And he says he's going to become world champion. Yeah, a pretty simple, serious promo. I thought he sounded fine. I don't know why he needed to mention Christian in the middle of it. That seemed like a detour to me, but... Yeah, that's what he did last year, yeah. I forgot kind of they, uh, he was, they were tag champs last year. They had right. would have been in the three-way. Yes, with that's a, right. that was like I think that was the one with Swerve and our glory and, uh, <laughs> uh-huh. team, and uh, team Taz. Remember, that was when oh boy. Team Taz were title challengers. Oh, yeah. Oh, wow, Taz. that feels like a long time it ago. It does feel like a long time ago. I like, almost forgot. Starks was a heel. They were just, he was still teaming with Hobbs. Yep. Hobbs was like, that's so weird. Which I think Starks and Hobbs had more legs than they gave it as a team. Uh, yeah, that was. They were like. You have just, the speed and mouth guy and then the silent powerhouse. Just, I think just it's just fine. Just before the. Um, and they could have been absolute power. Right. And like, that's not a. That, that's a thousand times better than Swerve and Our Glory or Correct. Naturally Limitless, Correct. which is. Dustin Rhodes and Keith Lee, just so you, just so we're clear. <laughs> um, but like that feels so long. They were a good team, and it was funny they started to build them up like more uh, as they like just before they got split. Like they got like they had two title challenges. I remember they were in the one with Swerve and Our Glory and Jurassic Express at Double Nothing, yeah. which they didn't win. And then there was the one at Fighter Fest, which Swerve and Our Glory won. That's when they won the titles. That was the boxing team Taz and them, like. I don't know. That was in, like that was in, that was the same day Punk won the title uh, the first time. Like, and that their feels, singles runs haven't been. Yeah, that feels like ages. Just I, put them back together. I wouldn't hate. It. I mean, I do like Starks as a face. I will say that, but mm-hmm. I also I like that stage of Team Taz when they didn't when they weren't complete losers. Yeah, Team Taz. There was a dark period for them. For there sure. definitely was. They but, were like the same as the Factory and whatever else. Yeah, that it. iteration of Team Taz though was really good. Yep, like, and that wasn't too far off from uh. When Jurassic Express defended against the Box and Redragon, that was fun too. That was whole storyline was cool too. I miss Redragon. Me too. Anywho, circling back <laughs> to circling back to current tag teams, um, we have nice. FTR speaking words they to are. my face mm-hmm. through a TV with microphones in their hand. Like, hey, we pile drive you. So what? Get over it. <laughs> get over it. People get dropped on their heads all the time. Right, like friends. Friends pile drive friends, man. Yeah, you can pile drive me. Like, it's fine. <laughs> I'll, I'll remember that. It's on the record. That he <laughs> said I can pile drive him. Uh, Cash uh, said that Jerry and Lethal both tomorrow them every step of the way, and you can't take that away from them. He says they've been lucky, but double nothing, their luck runs out. Ooh. Uh, Dax said that Jeff has broken many guitars and still can't remain relevant. He said that the head tag team division are going to be some rejects from TNA. He told Jeff to call the Queen of the Mountain, not referring to Karen Jarrett, but Dixie Carter. Ooh. Ooh. Dixie Carter reference. Yeah. Because people get that. I got that. I don't know how many people are aware of Dixie Carter, but maybe a lot. Maybe more than I think. You dissing Dixie Carter? Never, 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 never. Are you sure? I, that sounded nope. That sounded bad. She's going to be a guest on the show Dixie next Carter. week. Yeah. Oh, sweet. First ever interview is Dixie, Dixie Carter. Dixie Carter. <laughs> All right. That makes sense. Wait, we could have interviewed. Who was it? Fred Rosser. Fred Rosser. I was going to say Darren Young. We had that opportunity. Declined. Make FNS great again. Declined. Yeah. <laughs> um. Uh. Then Mark Briscoe came out uh, and Cash told Mark not to let them make Mark look stupid. He said three times they went to hell and back with uh, the Briscoes. And now they go to hell with him. 
Um, Dax apologized to Mark for the pile driver, and Mark pushed his hand away. He slapped Dax in the face, and Cash was kind of playing Peacemaker, and Mark left. Uh, Mark went up the ramp, and he pushed Karen and Sanjay away, and then slapped Jarrett, who took that pretty well. I'll say that. <laughs> um, Mark told Lethal that he's his boy, but he's getting tired of this. Uh, and that was it. Yeah, I don't know. I wasn't a huge fan of this. They were just like cheap shots with the TNA and Dixie Carter stuff. And like, Cast- Caster did it better. Whose side is Mark Briscoe on is not a super captivating story for me. I don't know, but I thought this was an in- a better way of like, because they always do like the the refs gonna call it down the middle. But yeah. I think this is a different way of approaching because like instead of him being like at peace with both of them, he's kind of annoyed yeah, at both of them. So both. he's indifferent to like. I guess I like I didn't. I'm not saying this is my favorite thing ever, but that's at least a different way of getting an impartial referee. That's true. right? So I didn't hate that. I, at least I struggled to focus on this a little bit because I'm oh, not I, super I just, into not, it. I borrowed from TJR. So and yeah, and FTR. It, I don't. It, I love uh, them, but this isn't what I want. This for is them. not the first feud I wanted for them. Um, like I thought the best part was Mark Briscoe slapping people. It's like, almost it looked good. It's almost like the feud with DIY and FTR has just, and then also the Bucks too, right? Like that's all I want for FTR is some super awesome feud with another really really talented tag team, right? Where mm-hmm. they can have a series of matches, and I'm fine with seeing all of them. I feel like that's not even a lot, too much to ask, like, or even like right. a bet, just a bet, like an act. This is not a team. I know, and so they need to hopefully retain we'll get into our predictions i guess they need we need ozzy open back that and, will, yes that will agreed. be legendary like that you could build into something and again i'm fine with three four matches between the two of them over like a six month span it's like a lengthy feud between amazing teams i wish we could get diy and aww because that feud amazing. just spoiled me so now everything that's the benchmark right yeah. for ftr stuff and they it's just even, like they haven't even had like a in my opinion, they haven't had a full proper feud with the Bucks. They had like their No, I would agree. Remember they had the feud in twenty twenty. That was that was when the Bucks were kind of weird. Remember They've had they were, matches. They but were the... they were doing that. Remember they were doing like the weird kind of like face heel, yes. the weird thing, and they, that match was great. Of I remember because I remember the finish when Cash went for the four fifty. Like they broke the right. no flips, no fists. I thought that finish was amazing. And it cost them, yeah. I, I'll, I'll always remember that finish. Yep. And then they had the second match. I think it was it was just after uh they won the ROH tag titles because I remember. It was for the AAA and ROA tag titles, and they had a match with the Bucks, just like on TV when the Bucks were still heel. Right. And FTR were like kind of face. And that was great, too. I remember liking that a lot, too. But like, I feel like we haven't gotten like a true proper program with those teams. Like, I feel like the 2020 feud was kind of like, it was kind of off the back of all the internet, like who's the best. And like, it was good, but it kind of got marred by the Bucks. That, that being a weird time for the Bucks. Yeah. So I think like, I would argue, I mean, obviously the timing is nowhere near right with both of these teams being pretty far on the babyface side, mm-hmm. but I, I would argue we still need a proper Bucks FTR feud at some point, so you could definitely run that, and then Aussie Open, and then, like, I would, I mean, you could do Lucha Bros if you turn one of them heel, or you do a face feud, I don't really care, Yeah, that could work, and then, like, I really where's Santana? We need Prime Powerful back. That would be amazing. We need them back because they were they were awesome back in the day. I've heard someone speculating that FTR will go heel and join Punk for a little faction. I would, I can't, I would hate that. <laughs> I knew you would, but yeah, I just I don't know. I want to watch FTR in the ring, and I just the tag division. We've talked about it for whatever weeks, a month more than it's that. It's bit, not. It's a bit in limbo right now. Where we want it, yeah. Yeah, and I do like the signing of Aussie Open because I think that's a good start if you want to start rebuilding. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's definitely like I said, great addition. But um, we still need some work. And I know I was never a fan of the rankings in some ways, but at least it was a way of sort of seeing contenders and a way of seeing if people deserve to be. Yeah. Although I don't know if they did the rankings the best, but anyways, it's just kind of now like why do why are Jarrett and Lethal getting title shots why yeah it's not and it's in like this weird spot like i'm I'm like the rankings were like they were kind of dumb but they kind of like were i kind of like there was at least a framework for matches being set up and stuff. right they at least had to like get in the top five right i mean it in practice at least they weren't doing it the best but in theory i get the point of having them yeah in hindsight i would kind of like them to have it like you know like they haven't done it since like august or something but like I, it is a little helpful because, like, I'm, I'm agreeing too. Why do we? Why in the hell? Is, for the third time in a row, too. This is like they challenge the acclaim, they challenge the guns, they challenge FTR. 
Why? I know. It's Jeff. What did they have? They've not done anything. Just respect to Jarrett's whatever. I was watching. I was just watching some old TNA from, I want to say, 2005 or something, and he's there. Like, Were they still doing pay-per-views? I can't remember. Was that still the so, weekly yeah. pay-per-view or no? Mm, I can't remember. Mm. I was just randomly pulled yeah, he up was on like the, to watch it. He had his reign of terror in conjunction with Triple H because he was running TNA, right? So he had he was like the constant like, if he he got he he lost the title, he'd like lose it back or he'd win yeah, it back in like course. a little bit because then he like dropped it to like Rhino and like our truth got it for a bit and like book you know. yourself to win. Yeah, hmm. battle arts. Like that that yeah. They, yeah that was funny last night at the indie show we went to. One of the owners came out and they dedicated the new arena because they converted an old library i think it was into their facility anyways so he is the owner and one of the trainers i think too and then he put himself in a main event hardcore match so we got our first live indie like blood hey eh, in that one oh, yeah. he bled pretty good pretty whoever good. the guy was i didn't catch his name i missed the bleeding item yeah the bleeding would have happened right at our feet because we were front row yeah and we weren't paying attention it, it was right there too because he got didn't... a chair thrown in his face which looked pretty good actually like the the guy had basically had his hand on my lap as he was picking up the chair and then threw it. It looked pretty good. But mm-hmm. yeah, we missed the bleeding. Yeah. But anyways. anyways. Sorry, we, we, yeah, we've digressed quite uh, a bit here. Next we get Sammy Guevara with Renee. Uh, she says that MJF said that the offer still stands for Sammy to lay down, take the pin, and take the big check that was offered to him many weeks ago. Here's all the heel things you could do, Sammy. What's your response to this? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Sammy says he knows MJF will watch this, and he says, hell no. He says MJF can't buy everything, and Sammy isn't for sale. He says everyone's tried to buy him out of his dreams, and he's told them all to shove it up their asses, and he's made it, and he will be the man to take the AEW AW title from MJF. And another, I thought, like, another super baby face promo. I think yes. it sounds good. I'm not, I'm not. Agree. I'm not complaining. I'm just saying, why is he in jazz? Right, and where, because he's not winning, obviously. Where do you so go? So where do we go after this? Is it just like he drops all this and then back in Jass? <laughs> I'm a or sports entertainer. Are we just supposed to forget he was in Jass and he's a solo baby face? I mean, I guess he could go back to Jass with baby face tendencies and eventually work his way yeah, out so of there. Do the Garcia thing, but as a story, but like actually get out. Yeah, it's like week after week after week now. He is not a heel, so I'm curious as well. He's... Yeah, I thought this was fine. None of the final promos ahead of the pay per view really. Like I don't think added no. much or pushed anything. I think further, between but... this and the elite thing, like because the last the final segment on last week's show was awesome. Yes, it was. I think last week could have been the go home. I agree because this is just like it's giving them more opportunity to speak, and that's fine. But it's not really adding anything. I would have just done last week's show, but put the Fletcher match in, and then that would be the go home. And then mm-hmm. last week could have been something else. Like what was what was last week's opener? I'm just I'm looking last I'm trying week's to find my doc. opener. Oh, I don't know. Why am I, I wanna I'm um, I can find it start, while you talk. Start working. Start working. You just keep talking, I'll find it. I my thing's frozen now. Wait. Oh, I got it right now. What what was the opener? The opener was probably something not AEW that was Dynamite. Yep, Wardlow. Solid. Oh, Wardlow talking. What was and the then opening it, match. Big Bill and Moriarty. Oh yeah, Allen see? And Cassidy. Point proven. We could have just like taken Cassidy out of that and given Darby Allen something else instead of Roddy's match and then you know, just or, yeah, you just put the Fletcher match in last week. That's your go-home. You just Boom. want Fletcher match every week at this point. Fletcher can face Darby Allen next week. It could. That would also be sick. Anywho, next we get our open house match for the Trios Championship. Uh, house of Black and defending against Metalik, Blake Christian, and A.R. Fox. Mm-hmm. And so the dealer's choice is that they chose Lucha Tag Rules, so it's just like... Which I like. You don't need tags. I think you still can, right? But like you can right. just go in and out if you need to. Like, yeah, if anyone... Whoever's if, in the ring for that team is legal. And then, yeah, if someone goes out of the ring, you just send a new person in, mm-hmm. that person out Which of the ring. Which they rings. did make use of. They did early on, and then I feel like they kind of... I wish they would have used it more because I like the idea of Lucha Rules sometimes, yeah. not all the time. Yeah. And they use it a lot at the beginning and then not so much. But mm-hmm. anyway, sorry, go ahead. Um, There's a sharp back elbow from Black to Fox, remember? It was awesome. That looked yeah. killer. It did. Uh, there's a corner splash and a beal to Fox from King. Uh, Black caught Metalik diving with a knee strike. Uh, there's stereo dives from Metalik and Christian. Uh, Fox hit an implosion sent onto the outside. Uh, Murphy hit a curb stomp, which Fox looked dumb setting them up. But the he took the curb he stomp. He did off, look so. silly waiting for it, but the impact was fantastic. Yeah, yeah. pretty much worth it. Yep. Uh, Murphy locked Fox in the inverted clover leaf, which was interesting. Right, because that's his. Are they? 
there. Just together, not married? Yeah, they're just together. Yeah, with Rhea Ripley, right? So yeah, that's Ripley's move. Borrowed from her. Medley tried to save, make the save, but Black put him in an E-bar. And so then the finish came when Christian was trying to break Murphy's submission with super kicks. He just kept kicking in the face. And Murphy was selling it, but like he just kind of kept yeah. holding on until King... Uh, carried him over the ro- like over the ropes and then did like he did like the hanging sleeper yeah off on the apron uh, and then eventually fox tapped to murphy and the house retained and kind of like they all had submissions at the end we didn't get um the finisher i love from brody king that's names escaping me gonzo bomb is it or the dante's inferno dante's that's inferno the, that's a tag one yes uh so yeah i mean this was not a super long match. I thought it was fun. Predictable outcome, obviously. And I thought Blake Christian's selling was pretty good in here. Some stiff-looking offense. Nothing super special, right? Just building House of Black's resume. Uh, again, the Lucha rules I wish could would have come into play a little bit more later on. But uh, yeah, like, and the lighting was cool this time, right? It was a little bit different. The Yeah, the crowd lighting was like... I don't know how you describe like... it. It was like there's like bands of light going through the crowd, bands of light. yeah, sort of it like was, curved. Yeah, kind of curved. The best band. Way I like could it, say was, it. it was different. It looked and, cool, but, but like, without being, we were saying like, we're, yeah, like it's not like bathing the whole thing. Exactly color, the it's word like, I was going to use. It's mostly just incorporating black, incorporating uh, black and white. Yes, right. So it works really well, but and not affecting like, the action. The way no, the action the match looks. looks fine still, and it looks it looks unique, but also it actually looks cool because the fiend lighting was freaking stupid. It's like the backdrops different but the stage is the same you're saying uh what was it gallus gallus this week were in like green i assume it was uh, it's either green or yellow being colorblind uh probably but, green knowing them uh yeah so they were doing the whole like bathed in a green light and it looked silly yeah whereas like, this looks kind of cool um, the fiend was brutal because remember he they had the hell in a cell match and the cell was red too, right. so it was just like too much i hate the red hell in a cell though i'm so glad they got rid of that mania this year but like the red lighting and the red cell is just a lot horrible. a lot of red that's just the it's horrible but like yeah and like remember Sin Cara had the weird lighting like you did his wasn't as bad if i come because it was kind of like the yellow light around mm-hmm. like it wasn't as bad but i remember people still like or i've heard like people complain about it still like it was weird mm-hmm. and I, th- I think the house of black lighting works really well i, I, do I too. really like it it creates a cool different atmosphere i agree i liked it mm-hmm. um i thought it was a solid outing for the house i think the open house matches are a cool kind of semi-regular thing to have on tv this in conjunction with the international title matches i think works really well um the only thing i just realized is like i do want i'm excited for someone good to be cassie but then i feel like it won't be the same like that and that, that's gonna kind of suck i know it'll be the Cassie's, end of this it's, i want someone else to have the title but at the same time i don't i agree you know and i if you'd said i was gonna feel that way about orange cassidy a while ago i'd have been like probably not no because i right? remember being kind of but, disappointed when he beat pack but i yeah. think all in all it's been a worthwhile like he's done he's done much more for the title than pack did because like i mean i already talked about this and it's a little bit of veering off again but like <laughs> we do that if you're a regular listener you know but like fine. when pack had the title like i thought it was kind of cool him going around defending on like different indies like yeah. around the world but at the same time I, it kind of irked me just because like i get that as it being like the inner like or all atlantic but all atlantic international it's the same kind of purpose right so we'll just say international for this purpose but like i understand it for that reason but to me like it kind of irked me because it's it's an AEW title so i don't like to me that means you can just like i know it's international but like you can defend against international opponents like kyle fletcher and like bandito and whatever mm-hmm. right but you I keep it in AEW, and then when like you go to toronto you defend it which makes sense or when or they to go England. to when they go to like yeah london or wherever that is you defend it there right if, you, if they go to mexico or japan or wherever then you can defend it and like i think I don't mind it being away sometimes, but like Pac for me took it away too long. And then he defended against Kip Sabian and Orange Cassidy. And, and that's those all I are, remember. And the matches, I watched one of them in a, an indie film. And they, they all aired on Dark, right? But they're so. really, yeah. And so they were kind of. And they like, were readily available, but I wasn't going to go find it them. Was cool it was cool that he was defending all around the place. But A, I like to keep an AEW, which Cassie's done obviously a great job of. And like Cassie gets better competition keeping an AEW. Ooh. You know what I mean? fantasy book pack comes back as a mega mega heel and wants his title back and that's the big feud for cassidy i would watch that you could anytime you could i, I miss pack i would like to i would like pack to have a title run actually here because he was away me from too most of it. like i don't know it just kind of me. i just love pack give me more pack anywho yep uh, back to the point i like having this and the international title matches is like kind of regular like high spot on tv absolutely right like it's a it's something that you can pretty much always look forward to yep every week 
Which um, I thought was going to be the TNT title, and it has been in the past with certain people. Darby, but like Darby Allen. It's His even was really Sammy short. Sammy was like, doing it. Yeah. Yeah, like Sammy and Darby. Like Darby more recently. Like his was really short though. Like his was yeah. like a mini Orange Cassidy run. But like I still really like that. And I remember like at the time I liked that a lot better than Cassidy. I think Cassidy's mm-hmm. obviously done a lot better because they've given him the time to do it. Yeah, but, yeah, like, for sure. Yeah, and I, I like having these regular high spot like things that I really like. And Me like, too. It makes the titles mean something because like Cassie's defending all the time. He's still making it out with it, like, and it's making it like kind of worthwhile. It's I think it's like because the whole thing where he wanted everyone to come in or like talk to him. I think I like that better than the whole Wesley thing. Like I think his thing is solid too. The it is. fighting champion stick, but I think Cassie's doing a lot better. Yeah, it's uh, he's definitely selling the wear and tear aspect more than right. Wesley West is, is just kind of like everyone. He's up for it all the like, time. He's yeah. just. Yeah, I yeah. think Cassie, it, it makes more sense. Um, anyways, I thought the Lucha Tag Rules were a really cool choice for the dealer's choice stipulation because, like, it helped to make it more unique and, like, that feels like a logical kind of thing because, like, we were saying, like, the no Julie Hart rule last time was, like, that's a fine choice, but it's kind of weird. And you got to pick something that benefits you, And right? it was kind of a cop-out because Julie Hart just wrestled, so mm-hmm. she probably wasn't going to be there anyways. Right. Um, and like, so this one I thought was interesting because it made it feel different. It benefits Metal Leak being a luchador right. and whatever. And like, it, it was just kind of cool. Uh, the faces got a solid amount in the house, looked dominant enough in the end. Um, and I think it worked all around. I thought the finish was cool and the lighting continues to look sweet. Yep. So I thought, thought this was solid. Um, next, there was a bit of an elite versus Blackpool package. Uh, there's just clips from previous segments in last year's Anarchy in the Arena, as well as a brief talking head from JR. Um, I thought it was an SL package. There wasn't a lot to it. Yeah, it was, and then it was just straight into the interviews. It and, looked cool. And yeah. it reminded me, I would like them to play Mox's theme for half of the match <laughs> the, again. That was that made us laugh. That quite a was bit my last favorite time. thing ever. That was like this like a, arena wide brawl playing out to wild thing. Exactly. That was the, <laughs> for that was so quite weird. a while. That was like it was at least half of the match. Yeah. I feel like it was, and it was like I, you keep thinking it was gonna end, but it just no, just, kept, it just going. kept going. I'm amazed at how long that went for. Like it had to be at least like. 20 minutes or something it was it was nuts uh anywho we cut right to a blackpool promo in the backstage or actually not sorry in the locker room uh dan soon is speaking about how their first objective is to win the ROH tag titles tonight which is yuda and claudio uh facing the lucha brothers and that'll be the main event uh, and then their second objective is to end the elite uh in anarchy in the arena that moxley spoke saying that they uh, they do this job the way it's meant to be done and there's nobody better than them um you wonder if they're willing to step up and deliver when it counts. I said that this Sunday they will deliver, and they will see you'll see the difference between professionals and amateurs. Yeah, I thought both guys sounded great here. They have different styles, but it works together, and Mox was going with the quiet confidence here rather than like the raving lunatic sort of thing, which I like. I don't mind either for him, to be honest, either depending works, yeah. on the situation. But yeah, these guys continue to just be a super cool faction, so I like this. Yeah, I like what both of them said. It was cool, and, like, the calm intimidation works. And I like their formula. Like, dancing kind of starts it off, and Me then Mox wraps it up, because they're both super reliable on the mic, so I think it, it makes a lot of sense. Yep. Uh, next, we hear from MJF. Uh, he, like, spat some drink or commentary. I don't remember what that was, but he was, like, spat something at them. Oh, uh, yeah, I don't remember. Yeah. On the to Tony, right, probably? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and just said that when you look around this arena, the, um, they should change the name to Virgin Vegas. Uh, he trashed uh, the rest of his opponents at Double Nothing and said he's fully aware of how important and monumental it is for the four of them to be in the main event. He said that they've been here since day one and they weren't on national TV for, for years prior. In reference to Moxley. I was like, he's like, we're not like your favorites who are on TV prior. And then I was like, damn it. <laughs> he got me. True. I uh, just said you didn't know who they were. But they had beaten everybody. Uh, he claimed he was bored. He's bored around here, uh, and he's sick of this place. He said he's uh, sick of the lack of competition, sick of the fans not showing him the respect he greatly deserves. MJF mentioned his contract coming up. And he complained about how he doesn't have to get pinned to lose his belt. And he said Tony Khan wants to have someone take the title from him before he's out of there. He said that this title is his ball, and he runs with it faster than anybody else. He said these three men are talented, but none of them are on the level of the devil. Level of the devil. That was a nice little line. Um, I laughed at some of this, right? Like the. Oh wait, I'm sorry. Oh, I sorry. Get the, not... I gotta get the Darby. Yeah. Darby came. Go ahead. I forgot. I'll save all my thoughts for the. I end. was just thinking of the meaner than devil. 
meaner than devil yeah. meaner than evil meaner than devil meaner than devil yeah transition exactly. we made the other day yeah yeah what what's the meaner than devil is like what meaner than evil is bronze ridiculous yeah and new then, little catchphrase line I was whatever someone's meaner than devil i don't remember what i said but i remember someone could be like yeah meaner than devil because you just change one word but what was oh that? wait no i was saying mjf could be like oh right because he's the devil yeah so he could be like meaner, meaner than, than devil, devil and then you just change one word and then Pac could come back and be meaner than Neville. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> yeah, that, that would work. Yeah. Um, so then Darby Allen showed up for the interruption. Uh, he joined Max in the ring. Uh, he said he knows where he's going. He talked about uh, chasing after his pro wrestling dreams and said AEW saved his sanity because he lives the way he wants to. He's going to climb Mount Everest next year or something. He says he wants to be the face of AEW, so he wants to be world champion, and he's going to take the title, maybe with a headlock takeover. MJF low blowed him. Uh, Shivani called him the lowest former life on earth. Uh, Sam McGuire ran down the ramp and MJ ran away. Then Jungle Boy came down the ramp and clotheslined him and held up the title. He's not winning. Can't touch the He's title. When winning. will they learn? When will they learn? Dumb baby face. Yep, exactly. Uh, yeah, I, uh, I like that MJF still finds a way to put over the other three pillars, right? And then he started to get some cheers because he was doing it. And then he quickly, like, he reverted back, gets his heat back by just being a jerk to the audience. So that works. Um, I'm fine with him talking about the upcoming contract stuff. I know some people don't like it, but I think it's a realistic situation, right? That MJF would exploit from what, everything we know about his character. So I'm totally fine with him using that angle. Uh, and, and it's one of these, like, it also creates a contrast where Darby loves the company, right? Because this is the only place that will let him do all the ridiculously dangerous things he does. So that's a direct contrast to MGF, MJF, who couldn't care less about the company. He just wants the best contract, right? So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, I don't think Darby covered any new ground here, but he's sounding more confident. And I think that's one of the benefits of focusing on the pillars is guys like Darby and Jungle Boy, even Sammy, but to a lesser degree, that just need more time to talk and be in front of live crowds and do stuff are getting that experience. And I think that's one of the perks of this storyline, right? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I thought it was solid. Um, MJF was good as usual. Um, I liked them talking about more pillar stuff. Um, cause it, it is just, the, it's cool how they're all in the main event and they're all the homegrown guys and whatever. And it, like you said before, it really sets them apart from the E. Mm -hmm. Um, also yeah, MJF, don't worry, don't really build one young guy, let alone right. four at a time and put them in the main event together for the world title. And yes. like, Probably AEW's biggest pay per view right now because this was like their first one, so yeah. it's kind of their mania if you really want to go there. And also, when MJF was making fun of the fans for his being more twenty four, so that was amusing. Um, some of it was pretty funny. Uh, Darby spoke well too. It wasn't like as amazing as the ones that he started with, but it was still good. And like you said, he's sounding better. Not a lot of new ground cover, but it was still solid. Uh, his shoes are something else. Those look weird. They were not. Uh, yeah, Guevara Jungle Boy didn't do much. That was fine. It was a solid go-home segment, but didn't feel like overly necessary. Nope. Just, oh God, we have one more show to put these guys out there to talk, go say But stuff. I don't mind having them out again. No, it's fine. Um, Next we have Ward, though. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so <laughs> <laughs> We oh. have soured on Wardlow, if people <laughs> can't tell. Uh, Wardlow says Christian thinks he has an advantage in the ladder match because he's known for it, and he made it famous. But Wardlow says he has climbed ladders his whole life, and he won the Face of the Revolution ladder match last year. <laughs> I've climbed ladders my whole life. That's the <laughs> that's where his confidence comes from. Has he? I, I don't know. I just think that's a weird thing to say. I've been climbing ladders since I was a kid. Okay. I climbed ladders cool. when I was four years old, damn it. <laughs> Anyways, sorry. Um, uh, and then he, ha he says Chris has a big mouth. He bets he could fit a ladder in. I'm pretty sure that's not right. I don't think. I'm, well, I mean, I'll, how I'll, big's the ladder? <laughs> what are we saying? Wait, One of your, yeah, figure no, ladders no, could fit wait. in there. A Lego ladder. This little thing. Exactly. This could, uh, this could fit in my mouth. I got like a little plastic ladder here. I don't even, I think it's like, because they had like connects, um, or like, no, they had like, like OW or whatever. I'm, yeah. I don't know what this is, because you can like break out the legs. I don't know. Anyways, it's like a little ladder. It's, like, really mini. It would fit in Christian's mouth. It would so. absolutely fit in Christian's mouth. But I'm... He said an 18-foot ladder or something. Maybe not. So I'm gonna, That's debatable. I'm going to go with no. Um, then Arn talks about how much damage Warlock could be capable with a steel ladder in his hands. Okay. Yeah. So I've, I'm of two minds, right? Like, Christian deserves this title shot. Why? He lost to Jungle Boy in the casket match or whatever. Rankings. Called. And had, I don't think he's won a match since then, has he? No, he went from this. Or he went from that to this. So then I'm annoyed, but then at the same time, I think the story is that he's the savvy veteran who has sort of 
manipulated young Wardlow into a match that's his specialty, right? So if that's the case and that's their intention, then that I don't mind that. Um, but it also makes Arn Anderson feel like he's doing a terrible job as the new mentor, right? Because he's even a, should be in theory, a savvier veteran who should see what Christian's doing. He, I mean, I know Wardlow... he wants Wardlow to get more violent here, but right. like, shouldn't he do something that benefits Wardlow a little more? Right. Like this, like this guy's just talking his way into a match with you. Why can't you see this? Like you just need to not let him get under your skin. So I don't, I'm kind of torn. I don't know how I feel about it. Um, the match might be okay. I don't really know. I, I guess we'll see. So I'm, I'm torn on this. If, if they did a better job of telling the story of Christian being a manipulator, then, then sure, I don't have a problem with it. But it seems kind of weird that he's getting a title shot off of nothing, basically, here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I thought it was fine. But for me, it just suffers from a case of I don't care. Yeah, there's a bit um, of that. That aside, Warless sounded fine, but I guess winning one ladder match in his entire career puts him on Christian's level. Right. He won a giant Sonic ring. TLC, he did, TLC, what? To be fair. Huh? What, yeah, what's TLC? Exactly. I got a giant Sonic ring, huh? Correct. You know, um, I still don't get or want the partnership with Arn. It just still doesn't make sense to me. Yeah, it's not working for me either. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't get it. Um, next we get Taya Valkyrie versus Lady Frost. This is your only women's match this week. Mm -hmm. And this like, is it. Lady Frost is never on TV ever. Nope. Like they had to give us highlights from Ring of Honor for God's sake. Right. Ring of Honor's got more women's matches. It does. Absolutely does. And I mean to be fair, they also have like more lower card matches just in general, but they got more women's matches Impact as well. Impact as well. We'll yeah. have two or three how and a segment. How long's Impact? Two hours. Oh. Right? Interesting. It's crazy. Yeah, like Take notes, TK. Mm -hmm. um, anyways, uh, there's a sliding basement layer from Valkyrie for two. Uh, there's a solid high kick in the corner from Frost that looked pretty good. Yep. Uh, Frost looked for the cartwheel and something in the corner. Valkyrie clocked with the layer for two. And then later on, Frost did hit a cartwheel into a cannonball in the corner. So that looked pretty it good, looked, too. It looked actually. like her. she ended up kicking her in the head off. Mm -hmm. It looked good, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, Tornado from Frost on the top, and then a spear from Taya. Yeah, one of the ones where she's just, it's like she's clotheslining your midsection, yeah, right? Not like getting she, the shoulder she involved. She mistimed the height on a clothesline. Yeah, basically. Uh, There's a blue thunder bomb from two from Valkyrie. It was more like a, barely a spin out power bomb. I don't know how to describe it other than a blue thunder bomb. So light, like, light blue thunder bomb. Blue, no. Light blue? A blue, no thunder bomb. <laughs> I guess. Like something like that. I don't know. So there's a funnier joke in there somewhere. Somewhere. Um, there's the wicked step scissor from Valkyrie. That looked like, good. That looked good. Yeah, yep. but that requires very little. I I think it's gonna look good for anyone, pretty much, right? As long as the person taking it yes. can do it good. Uh, Valkyrie caught a tilt world move and hit an okay backbreaker, and then she hit Road to Valhalla for the win. Which, just thinking about it here, like it, that's not a very good finisher. It just doesn't look super impactful, honestly. It doesn't look like a match ender. No, or let alone a fifty something match ender. If you're because you're basically dropping from waist height, right? It's not. It's about similar to falling over onto your face. I don't know. It, it never has impressed me Just, either. You get lifted up a bit. Like, the setup looks cooler It's than not even the like you keep their finish. arms behind their back either. Obviously, like, in real life, that's not safe. But in kayfabe, yeah. I'm just saying, like, yep. you, you're, you literally let their hands go so they can, like, right. cover themselves a bit. And in the, some cases, like, didn't Red Velvet take one where she, her face didn't even touch the mat or yes. whatever? Like, oh, Red Velvet, yeah. It, and then the setup's okay. Like, the overhooks and the lift, right? You're expecting something, and then it's just, oh. Anyways, this match I thought was okay. Each of them hit a couple cool-looking things, but there was also a bit of sloppiness along the way. Taya's just really lost a step. I hate to... I think we're piling on to her, but, like, she's not fast. She looked a little uncomfortable... She said she was, but I don't think so. ...running the ropes at times. She hasn't impressed me in quite a long time. I do think Lady Frost is a useful talent because... Uh, her gymnastics background just creates some cool offense and some cool spots, right? Right, and it's she's... not over the top with it like they do in NXT. No. Because sometimes it's like, oh, you have this background, that's like part that basically your thing. Kind of I've like seen a lot of her all over indie stuff. Um, and yeah, she's uh, she's pretty good. So I don't know, this for being the only women's match is not cool. It was okay, but... It was fine, yeah. Frost looked pretty decent. I thought a couple of her moves looked pretty good. Um, the Chino is iffy, but that's okay. Cause that, yeah. Because that was fine. And not a lot of women do stuff like that, so respect right. for her to her for doing that. Um, Valkyrie didn't look horrible, but she didn't look very good either. I'm still waiting for that reaffirming match. It's like, oh yeah, she's as good as I remember before. I don't think it's gonna be the one against Cargill. It, no, no, I I was just saying so, too. I don't think it'll be Jade. So I don't know what you do here. I don't and either. 
I think we're getting kind of a lose lose situation here because I don't. Okay, those fell. He's My so bad. upset he threw his headphones. <laughs> yeah, that's what it was. <laughs> um, but like, I think we're in kind of a lose lose here because I don't know how much longer you can do this Cargill title run. Like, it's getting really stale for me. Say you want to say what you want about Roman, but mm-hmm. he gets like. He's at least like when he's there, it's money matches. Right. When he's there, he put he has great promos. He has great right. segments. The acting's he's like, been awesome. The acting's been the awesome. The story's been awesome. The story's been awesome. Like it, it gets it got stale sometimes, but then For they sure. freshened it up like tenfold with Sami Zayn. Like yes. his title reign Shot of has adrenaline. had its downs, but it's had its fair share of ups. Who Jay's is just like it feels like it's plateaued for like a year now. It's been the same since it started. Right? It's been like it has not changed. I thought like a year ago, a double or nothing was. I'm pretty sure that's when Athena came in, and mm-hmm. I we thought she would be the one to take it from Cargill. That was a year ago. Yeah, that was like that was a freaking year and ago. Jade's had a couple of moves to her arsenal for sure, but she hit care- a tour of the islands a few times. Everything is basically the same. It's yeah. just been a her holding promos pattern. have barely changed. Barely changed. Uh, like she's kept pretty much the same entourage. She traded out Red Velvet and Kira Hogan for Layla Gray. Right. Which let's be honest, and that's Mark that's Sterling's a downgrade of anything. There or not? Yeah. Like like it's just it's part of like. So we're not kind of a lose lose because I feel like I can't go much longer with this cargo reign. Like it's the fact that this is their longest like five hundred plus day reigns. It's the longest power reign AW's had period so Correct. far. Is quite frankly just disgusting to me because it's just like <laughs> I don't know. It's just that's stupid. And then but then I honestly don't know if Valkyrie is going to be an amazing champion either from I, what I have seen. So I really don't like. I think I would prefer Valkyrie because at least it's different. But I feel like it's kind of a lose lose here if you see what I mean. Like, I do. I don't think there's a desirable outcome. And having two women's belts when you don't really focus on Right. Like in theory either of them. In theory, I really like having a mid card women's belt. Me too, Just, like but the, on not paper. The way they're doing it. Right. Like I think that's great on paper, but like and if Valkyrie loses where do you go from there? Right, it looks like, like another if, year of this. If, right, if she can't no end be a, sight. <laughs> if she can't be a credible challenger, that's going to be Cargo. Who can? She couldn't. Athena couldn't. I'm pretty sure she did. She ever face Statlander? I feel like she did. I don't know. Statlander's the one. I think Statlander could be, but like, I don't know. I don't know how close I would she is to coming rather, back. And now, but... I would almost just rather be done here and now. I hear you because I. Just I something really for the sake of something different. Right. Not even I, that I'm in love with Taya no, as a champion. I'm not, but Me like, either. I just, I need this to end. It, I agree. I really need it to end. Like, it's just, it's not, it's not good. And I don't think Jade's bad. I think she's like, just not, like you said, she's not good enough for how long she's been here. Mm-hmm. She's not, she's plateaued for too long. Yes. And like, at some point you just got to kind of pull the trigger, at least temporarily, and go back to the drawing board with her. Yeah, you got to figure out some new stuff for her to do. Something new, for like, sure. Freshen up her act in any way. Like I'm not saying she can keep the heel character because I think at its core it's solid. I do but too. You need to tweak a lot to make it fresh. You need to make me care about this again. I agree. And I think that could be applied to Wardlow a bit too. But honestly, I just don't want like the men's division stacked enough where you can just forget about Wardlow and I don't care. Mm-hmm. Jade Cargill, if you tweak her, make her better, she could still be an asset. Absolutely. She could be money for them. They just have to figure out what to do. Right. Yeah. And that's not been the case for a while. It has not. It feels like a long time since like we were like, oh yeah, she's really good for such, for like a newcomer not from the sport. She's really good for like however many matches she's had. Yes. Like, and then it, it's like she's still that same. I mean, she's added a destroyer or she's added whatever. But, but like for one match or two. Yeah. It's too many squash matches, too. And part of it is, too, like, I don't feel like she gets in there with a lot of ring generals who are going to elevate her and pull a really good match out of her. And I don't think some people are going to say, well, yeah, that's Taya. I don't agree at this point. So I don't know what you do. Like, I need Serena Deeb to come back and pull a great match out of... Great might be strong. A very good match out of Jade. even then, I feel like it would be like... I would like to see that, but then I'd be like, oh, Deeb's really good for doing that. Like... I don't know how much of the credit would go to Cargill, at least in my eyes. Right. Like, just knowing like how I would perceive that. I would book Deeb. That'd be my fantasy Especially booking. Like, Deeb comes back and wins it. We need that, and then we need like Cargill to have some good matches on her own. Like maybe with like, like people who are still good but less than Deeb, mm-hmm. and then eventually to the point where she can elevate someone not as good to like an okay match. Right. Like she's not at a status where she's able to elevate herself, let alone other people. It's just like I agree. It's been too long. It has. Anyway, is that? Well, that, that, was that a wasn't a co- digression. That, that was that, just. It a, was still on topic. It was yeah. a very much drill down into yeah, Jade Cargo. That was a long bit, but 
yet near nowhere as long as her title reign. <laughs> that is true. Boom. Uh, next week at Tony Khan's announcement about Collision, it's in Chicago, and he tries his hardest not to blink. Oh my, like, he's like, it's so. Odd. I don't. I was saying he like, just stares down the barrel of that like, camera. I, I'm like, he must be not be allowed to blink, or he must yeah. be just like super. Like, I I like it though. I don't know if like, it's like a nervous tick he has where he just know. like opens his eyes super wide and doesn't blink. It's it's when he's on camera. It's funny, but like I I I like it though. It doesn't bother his, me. It makes him feel like a real guy. He's not an actual speaker, but exactly, I like it cuz he feels he's like, like anti Vince He feels McMahon. like normal. He feels like a normal dude. Like he feels like a guy if you met him on the street, he'd be like the nicest guy yeah. you've met. Like he he just looks like a good dude, so I don't I always like when it's cuz it's so like interesting to watch just he cuz he's so weird a about it. But, fellow. Like, I'm not complaining. He's he, nope. he's Tony Khan and he's he he seems like a normal dude, not some genetic jackhammer who's 70 something and pure like concentrated evil pure evil like t- tony khan just seems like he's tony khan diluted evil <laughs> yeah <laughs> t- tony khan's just he- he's good old tk you know um but chicago i'm not thrilled about this for obvious reasons um yeah we talked about it a bit it sounds I just, like pop. i don't i don't want it i, I don't i don't want it nope uh next we got a hangman page interview uh he talked about being friends with the elite and kind of he was best friends with the Bucks, but him and Kenny was always different. They were kind of like family. He talked about how they're going to beat Blackpool and Anarchy in the arena, and they've run up a high price, and they're going to pay him blood or whatever, something like that. Yeah, so, I thought, something cool. I thought it was pretty generic just to get him on here before the pay-per-view. He sounded fine. I'm not a fan of the eye patch. I'm hoping that's not lasting long. But yeah, this was one of those, get him on there to speak before the show. It was fine. Mm-hmm. Nothing special. Yeah, um, it was solid. I'm, I was hoping for like an elite segment. Like with all of them, but um, that's okay. Again, I think last week should have been the go home because that was a perfect end. You yeah. really didn't need to add much. This more feels than that. tacked on. Yeah. yeah, yeah. All you and I'm not complaining because it's still an amazing story, and I I I really love the storyline. So I don't really like this. Doesn't hurt the storyline. It's just mm-hmm. like kind of extra. Mm-hmm. Like I agree. But like honestly, last week you could have just had that, and then like that's fine. All you needed was them to reunite, and the hype is there. You know. I agree. But like it's it's all right. Um. Hangman delivered it well. It feels appropriate after everything. Family works. It can be kind of like the family fights thing. So that was, that's kind of why they were feuding. Um, I'm really excited for this. Like, I'm, this is probably like my favorite thing they've done in a long time. Yep. I'm super hyped for this. And Blackpool, it's like they're such a strong group. Like They kind of have to forget their differences or this group's going to run roughshod over their, their company, right? The one that they're... So it kind of makes sense, even if they're not back together 100 percent. it's this idea of we have to do this to get rid of these guys because they're pretty nobody else here can stop them kind of thing right? infinity War. so that works yeah sure yeah if you say so keep going like in civil war avengers break up but yeah then they had to fight thanos right for a common enemy sort of so thing so i'm saying john moxley is thanos okay I've heard of Thanos. He snaps his fingers and he's purple. People die or something. I don't know. He's also um same guy played at you know Josh Brolin. Yes, it's him. Uh, and he was also the he bad guy in Deadpool too. He was cool. Cool. Um, next, back to wrestling. Next we get a contract signing. Everybody's favorite. Hooray! Thing. Yeah, I love contract signings. Who doesn't? I With wish no, I... no contact allowed. Right. So yeah. contract, no contact, <laughs> no physicality. I wish um there was the one uh. I wish I saw the one with uh, Trish and Becky. That would have been awesome. Amazing. Becky called her a B word. Of course, they have to. It Things. didn't. It happened here, didn't it? It did. Things yeah, I got thought so. Heated. <laughs> yeah. Well, cool. let's get into it. Uh, so Cole was talking about when uh, he got cuffed and Jericho was saying again when Saray was being big or the kind of sick, blah, 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 baby face, handcuffed and stuff. Um, Cole said that Jericho's a scumbag that thinks he can do whatever he wants whenever he wants because he's Chris Jericho. He said, we'll find out how invincible Jericho is this Sunday. And Cole beats the living hell out of him. Uh, mm-hmm. Cole said that AEW should be thankful that it's an unsanctioned match because the blood will be on his hands, and that's how he likes it. Uh, the fans chanted his name, and Cole said he can't beat him up now because of what they agreed to. He said, on Sunday night, we'll find out Jericho can walk because he'll break his legs. He'll shatter his jaw. He'll break his hands. And he said, if I were you, I would send the paper. B word. Exactly. Uh, and then Cole signed the paper and tossed it across the table. Uh, Jericho said the trans and he isn't said word, uh, because <laughs> he's not from Las Vegas. Oh, Boom. town heat. Yep. What up? Uh, Jericho teased a signing, but he decided to talk a bit. Uh, he played the video of Baker getting beat up again, 
So that's nice. And did the whole like, you're right two inches away and you did <laughs> nothing, which I <laughs> find was, funny. That was funny. Yeah. Uh, Jericho got in cold face and wondered what kind of man would allow that to happen to him. Like, why or Why would you let that yeah, happen? Yeah, you, your that's... wife got attacked right in front of you and you did nothing. It's not cool. Like, it's you, funny. You should do better. Um, Jericho, or he said he, he can't beat the Ocho. And he knows it. Uh, Jericho signed the contract and he said, Cole got outsmarted since there are no rules and it's five of them against two of Cole's group. I don't think two people's a group. No, it's not. It's a pairing. It's a pair. couple. It's a pair, yeah. Uh, Cole said he made the, a call to a man that lives in Las Vegas. I'm not going to do all the pre whatever. It's Sabu. Yeah. He threw a chair in Menard's face. It and is. That, that's I mean, weird. obviously Sabu, right? Yeah, yeah. Hot <laughs> free agent Sabu. <laughs> who, has, who has much history with Adam Cole. Right, bizarre. I I don't know. I would I wouldn't even say he has a lot of history with Jericho. And they were both in ECW. Right, he has more history there, I'm sure, than with Cole. So that part I did not understand. Because he's all. from Vegas, and that's it. Like that's just it's still weird to me. And then also, you're still outnumbered. Yes, and does Sabu really at 58 years old? Is he the muscle you're bringing in to? I don't know. Seems like there's better options, but. Outside of that, I think Cole is, uh, like, Cole to me is a good actor, right? So he's really believable as, like, the incensed husband here. And Jericho is at his best, right, as the slimy heel with mm -hmm. using that ridiculous heel logic, like, that you uh, were right there and let her get beat up sort of uh, thing. I thought that was funny. And I thought, like, all of that was rolling along really well. And then it was just a weird turn that it's Sabu who is, has nothing to do with Cole ever, has nothing to do with AEW ever is pushing 60 years old and you're bringing him in as your numbers balancer. So that part I didn't get, but I thought the stuff ahead of that was pretty good. Mm -hmm. Um, Yeah, uh, where is There it is. Um, Yeah, I thought it was pretty good. I thought Cole sounded good and he sounded angry. Uh, Jericho was, um, I thought he was, he was good, like taking advantage of the no physicality thing, like kind of goading right. Cole a bit. And I thought him like kind of taunting Cole with like, yeah, like the whole handcuff thing. I thought that was funny too. Um, I liked everything uh, Cole said, uh, and he was good as an angry baby face, but then Sabu, how does that remotely make sense? It doesn't. It, I don't yeah, know. It, I don't know. I don't get it. Um, then there's a Storm and Hater package. It's pretty short. Storm's going to target the arm, eat it or something. That's the story, right? The champ is not at 100%. Um, I heard that Hater might drop it if the I heard injury that too. is legit enough, which I don't know if, like... Um, or I heard someone speculating that she'll have a proxy, like... Bit, bit, Britt Baker will defend it for her. I would hope so, because I and don't then, want to try to run for that. And then okay. Breaker retains it for her, and that starts the friction between Hater and Baker. I like that. Where, listen, I, you know... I don't want the Outcast having the title, so anything. No. um, Doesn't feel like a fresh matchup either. I'm fine with the pre-existing injury story. You know I actually really like that, but Storm and Hater, just those people and those groups orbiting each other feels very stale at this yeah. point. Mm-hmm. Um, next we get Roderick Strong versus Daniel Garcia. And it was funny when I was watching the Tyler Ross matches, I saw him face Dante Rios, which coincidentally was Mr. Daniel Garcia. Correct. Which I didn't, I didn't, I didn't I notice didn't, that. No, me either. I never, I didn't know that. Um, so Roddy hit a backbreaker. Uh, Garcia hit the Wicked Stepsister. There, there it is again. It is. Um, Garcia taunts and he looked for a suplex, but Roddy Counter had dropped him with the core buster. There was a leg capture backbreaker from Roddy for two. Heavy slaps from Garcia and a Uranagi for two. Uh, Garcia locked Roddy in the Dragon Team, and Roddy eventually pushed him off. Uh, the finish came when Roddy hit a gut check and ended up parting for a win. Pretty short, I felt like. It was quick. I thought it was a solid TV match, right? I love seeing Roddy pick up another win, especially with the end of heartache, because we were talking Rollins about it. Rollins Styles is the opener, by it the is. way. It is. We were talking about it like a minute before, right? Like, the, oh, the end of heartache, and then he hit it. So, um happy for roddy to be winning because i wasn't sure what the, he would do when they brought him in right they could easily be like he's a good hand he can have good matches and doesn't need to win but picked up two wins already and it's garcia that seems a bit aimless right now right but uh i liked mm -hmm. the match it wasn't amazing but a, a good tv match that that was pr pretty quick i thought mm -hmm. um yeah i thought it was a solid tv match um it was pretty short i feel like they could have done a bit more if they had more time for but sure. i think it was good for what it was like it felt kind of pointless though you nice backbreakers, of course. All win for Roddy, just a fairly short one, which is fine. They're definitely capable of a better match than this, but again, given the time and there's no real build to this, it was fine. Honestly, I would have just thrown more time to the main event. Yeah, probably. It did felt, it did feel pretty brief to yeah. me. It could have been another ten minutes yeah. easy. 
Uh, Willow Nightingale got a quick promo just talking about she represented AEW last week, came inaugural strong women's champion. She's going to show everyone how strong she is. Yeah, I'm happy for her. She's good, and the crowd really likes her. So whether this was an intentional title move or not, which I guess not is the answer, I'm happy for Willow. <laughs> yeah, it's good for her. Um, uh, it was all, wasn't much, but good for her with the title. And the, her doctor bomb is pretty awesome. Mm-hmm. On uh, the next, we got our main event, which is Lucha Bros vs. Blackpool Combat Clubs, Claudio Casagnoli and Wheeler Yuta for the ROH World Tag Titles. Correct. The fact that this is not on ROH says everything you need to know about ROH. I guess so, yeah. I haven't been keeping up. I watch maybe a match or two every now and then, and that's it. Well, it can't. It clearly can't be that big if you'd rather put it on Dynamite. Than and the, they don't talk the about Ring of Honor on Dynamite like it's something. They don't. They don't treat it like... I should have seen it and be caught up and they don't treat it like I haven't seen it and they need to catch me up. They just treat it like it doesn't exist, basically. I right? guess because then it's like they're separate promotions, kind of. But I like, think so. But still. it makes it really easy to not focus on Ring of Honor. Well, I haven't watched, not I haven't watched at all. it since it started. Right. Like, I, I, I I've checked full, in, but... At least I haven't watched like a full show, I mean. Like, I think I, I watched the first two full ones and now I just... I know you watched like a couple. And I then... started and never finish it because it's just, it's just match after match after match after match. I think I heard one of them had 18 matches on it or something. Damn. So they just throw a ton of matches on it. There's Anyways. not like... Yeah, there's not like a lot of stories there. Like I know they got a bit of a story with um Stu Grayson and the Righteous. Oh, yeah? But... I that, haven't even heard that. that. That's it. Yeah, he's kind of. It's kind of like righteous or dark order. Like, but yeah, that's what it look to me. It looks like um. It's kind of funny. It looks like dark. Yeah, it does. Nice. And it feels like it because it's just match, 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 right? So that's a similar format too. Yeah, it's definitely not like. I don't know, it's not what it was. Yeah, Ring of Honor TV, um, May twenty fifth. Uh, Samoa Joe and Zack Saber Junior team up. Eighteen matches set. Wow. How? How long is well, that? A bunch of them are probably like, it's, they do two hours, I think, but like, I think it's two hours, no commercials. So I think it's a legit two hours. Oh, okay. Okay. Which makes it a lot, but a lot right. of quick matches probably. Anywho. Yeah. Sorry. Um, yeah, no, that's, that's weird. Mm-hmm. That is, it's certainly interesting. Um, so some notables, uh, Claudio caught Phoenix out of its springboard with an uppercut. I uh, swung Phoenix around and then uh, into a drop kick from Yuta, so that was kind of cool. Like Tyson Kidd reference. Mm-hmm. I think they used to do that. Mm-hmm. Uh, Phoenix countered a cola bomb into a code red, and then Penta got a hot tag flurry, hit a Project Champa for two. Love that. I can't believe you forgot who that was. I did. That's offensive. Uh, Penta goes for the arm snap thing. Claudio boots him off. There are stereo super kicks from, to Yuta from the Lucha Bros. Uh, P- Penta steps off Phoenix, hit Claudio with a destroyer. Phoenix hits his like pile driver finish for for two, like kind of the Rikishi driver looking thing. Yep. Uh, Claudio hits, or he is sorry, assisted Yuta with a diamond splash for two. Actually, looked like pretty impactful. It did. Um, the finish came and Alex distracts the ref because he's a heel. He's ridiculous. Sure. I don't enjoy him. Uh, it's. There it was, was a time, but now I'm just like he Penta, looks silly. That's when Penta had that weird, really short solo <laughs> heel run, and he would do the Penta says. It was funny, and now he's yeah. just there. And it doesn't seem to fit. Penta too. beat Cody Rhodes, even though Cody Rhodes no sold the arm snap. Right. I'll never forget that. <laughs> that was a really weird time because Penta was just like on his own for a little bit. He was. I don't remember why. I don't either. Was was Phoenix hurt? Probably. I don't know because I think it was like a little while after because Phoenix challenged Omega for the title, um, at the beginning of 2021, and I know I know it was in 2021 because Penta did that, but then. Later, remember his team was Eddie Kingston against the Bucks. That was a weird time. It was. But I remember that was cool because he beat Cody Rhodes on St. Patrick's Day. I'm pretty sure he won because I feel like if he lost, I would remember that as the Probably. biggest injustice of all time. <laughs> yeah. He already knows sold the arm thing. So anyways, Alex distracted <laughs> the ref. Young Bucks came from under the ring, held Claudia back while Lucha Bros hit their finisher to Yuta for the win. Uh, the post-match, um, Blackpool. Uh, oh, yeah, Young Bucks went, went, ran out into the crowd. Uh, other two guys came down, which is Mox and Danson. Mox tells them to smile while they still can, pose to the fans and see their family while they still can, because they won't be able to have to double nothing. Anarchy in the Rio will be the wildest and most brutal match in AEW because they won't sell for anything less. Well, now I got my hopes up. Should be um, fun. And he finishes by saying, if anyone is offended by what they've done so far and all the blood, they ain't seen nothing yet. Yeah, I thought it was a really good tag match and really picked up after the first few minutes. And the titles being thrown in added a bit of stakes, right? Makes it more main event worthy, I guess. And the involvement of the elite in the finish makes sense because it's the go home episode ahead of the pay per view. I didn't see any title change. Like, 
graphic posted, so I figured they would lose, and then that's right. when I was like, oh, yeah, probably interference. And the Lucha Brothers get a quality defense, right, against the top, top uh, team. A little bit of a screwy finish aside, but uh, I thought the show was bookended by very Why good did matches. Why Alex shock the ref? That's weird. I prefer, that is weird. Did I pre- know that, like, they were coming or something? I prefer the opener to this, but this was a good match, too. Yeah, I don't know what he was doing there, to be honest. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I thought it was a solid main event. Um, I think these guys definitely could have shifted into a higher gear, maybe take out the Strong Garcia match, which felt unnecessary for me, and then give this more time to build to something. There were some solid exchanges here, but I feel like it was, I was expecting a little better. Lo and behold, the opener was my favorite match of the night. Still think that was great, better than the rest. Good for Kyle Fletcher. Anyways, it was solid before Anarchy in the arena. Like, yeah, f- solid go home, I guess. I think so. Yeah, you got that last little taste. That match should be pretty fun, for mm-hmm. sure. Uh, overall, I thought another good episode of Dynamite. Not quite. I think there's been a couple in a row in my A- minus range. It didn't quite make that to me. Thought the opener was great. Match of the night. Main event was a fairly close second. A good match. And I liked uh, Garcia and Roddy Strong as well. Women match I thought was uh, nothing special. I didn't think the segments or anything were amazing. I did like Blackpool's segment again this week. But I don't think anything was really bad either. It was just a lot of final chance for people to talk ahead of the pay-per-view. Didn't really add anything so i thought it was a b show this week close to a b plus but not quite uh good but not amazing uh solid go home show i'm already looking forward to the pay-per-view so they didn't need to do too much more to sell me on it we were already buying it so um good show this week Mm -hmm. um yeah um i thought the opener was fantastic easily my favorite thing on the show that was just you should add it to your list you feel like you liked it even more than i did i have i might i mean at least it's really good tv matches right out of nowhere um yeah that was really good um i think like everything else was solid i think it was like it was a solid show but for go home i don't i wouldn't say it was like amazing just because i feel I like last week was such a such a like far stronger go home it was. show i i liked it but like um mjf was solid uh the contract signing was fine uh trio's match was solid as well like that was pretty good um any of the pillar segments were fine the ftr stuff i didn't love didn't care about it blackpool were good in anything they did hangman was all right um Starks is okay, but like anything other than the opener was like good or not great. Um, and the opener was like the only thing you should really check out if you want to. Because I, I agree. Fletcher looked awesome. Yep. Um, and that is pretty much it. I would probably give it a B too. Like I um, like kind of middle of the road B, just because I like it would be a little higher if it, it was just a normal show. Because I feel like as a go home, it needs to have a little more something to it. Right. But, I think so um, too. I think other than that, it was it was solid. Yep. All right. All right, so now we're going to uh, move into some trivia. Before we go back to talking about more wrestling, we'll take a break with a little trivia, and we call that segment Off the Top of His Head. All right, so I, we are going back to chat GPT because it's made for some entertaining stuff. Oh, so I just that's keep... Seth Rollins' question is gold. And I keep thinking of like wrestlers you love because the greatest matches seem to be... Uh, a good route to go so i went uh my prompt was 15 multiple choice questions on dean ambrose's best Uh, wwe matches okay Okay. that's interesting so it says sure here they are or whatever it says okay so um i hope they asked me what number he came in it's weird because normally they put the answer right after each question but this time they put all the answers down at the bottom so i have to scroll down i don't like that not that the answers matter because no, they're know. probably yeah. wrong anyways yeah so number one in which pay-per-view event did dean ambrose face seth rollins in a ladder match for the wwe world heavyweight championship money in the bank 2015 sorry money in the bank 2015 yeah they are saying tlc 2015 so you're wrong no, Rollins would have been injured then. <laughs> again. It was Roman Reigns and Sheamus for the title then. So awesome. Rollins injury comes back again. So flawed question one. Aut- automatically, yeah. At which WrestleMania did Dean Ambrose face Brock Lesnar in a no holds barred streak? Thirty two. That was my first mania. That is one of the options, so let me see it's if thirty two. Nope, thirty three, you're wrong no, again. <laughs> he faced Corbin on the pre show for the IC title. Yeah. In a in a holds barred match, like a, a normal match. <laughs> Hold, uh, every, holds our barred. Holds, Some holds our barred. Some holds barred. Number three, who did Dean Ambrose face in the finals of the WWE Championship Tournament at Survivor Series 2015? They claimed, okay, last time they claimed Seth Rollins was in the finals, but it was, he lost to Roman Reigns. Dean Ambrose did? Yeah. Or Rollins did? And Rollins was in the tournament. Remember, that was the question where they said he was in the tournament, but he was 
the whole ter- purpose of the tournament was that Rollins is injured. So, so you're, Ambrose lost to Roman. He faced Roman. So you're wrong because it, according to Chat GPT, who would never make a mistake, he faced Seth Rollins in <laughs> again. The <final>. <laughs> <laughs> what is the, the, so they they claim that Seth Rollins is in this tournament and, and in the finals. Yes, but like even despite the tournament being for his injury, did they say last time that Ro- Roman beat Rollins? I, I can't like? remember because. Oh, you so he was in the finals and faced two different people, depending on who. Okay, he, so right? he faced Roman or Dean Ambrose. Correct. But the the fact of the matter is, he was definitely in the finals. Exactly. He was there. Just because just... he wasn't in the tournament doesn't even like that's <laughs> he still details. Be in the finals. Right. Which event featured Dean Ambrose's memorable match against Triple H for the WWE World Heavyweight Championship? That was that weird like network special, the Roadblock 2016. Mm-hmm. Not end of the line, but just like straight up Roadblock. It's funny because Roadblock is on there, but they are saying no, that it was in fact Fastlane 2016. No, Fastlane was, uh, it was him, Brock, and Roman. And the winner would face Triple H at Mania because that remember the 2016 Rumble was for the title, right? So the Rumble winner wouldn't have like the main event spot already. <laughs> yeah, and I mean, so that was kind of like the substitute. Wow, they they're consistently wrong. Let's see if the, I, at this point it's like, will they get one right? Even <laughs> Dean Ambrose defended the Intercontinental Championship in a ladder match against which opponent at WrestleMania 32? And then I wait for you to go. That didn't happen. Go ahead. No. <laughs> Just um, no. What he didn't. What do you have options? I do. Okay. The Miz, Dolph Ziggler, Kevin Owens, Sami Zayn. Let's go Kevin Owens. Kevin Owens is correct. No, it's not. <laughs> so, because so okay, so he faced at uh, thirty two. He faced Lesnar in the No Holds Barred Street Fight, right? Yep. And then the Intercontinental Ladder Match was Owens defending the title against like there was I think it was Stardust, Sin Cara, Miz, Ziggler, Zayn, and Zack Ryder. I think it was eight people. Yeah. That was the one that, remember, Zack Ryder won, and then he lost the title to The Miz the next night. Oh, right. His reign. See? Nice. Um, which event saw Dean Ambrose compete in a Shield triple threat match against Roman Reigns and Seth Rollins? Oh, Battleground 2016. I love that match. Battleground 2016. Hey, there we go. Hey. They're one right, for that's six. Good. There we go. One for six. I love that match. Who did Dean Ambrose face in the very first asylum match at extreme rules 2016 the events right okay, okay. i'm always okay. like as soon as i Is go to Jer- say the it's event, jericho i'm ready remember for the to... remember the thumbtack spot oh yeah that's right that's that hey they got two in a row wow okay okay so this segment has not become do you know wrestling it's basically become this chat gpt no how, how much can i disprove the ai and the answer is no it doesn't <laughs> uh dean ambrose captured his first wwe championship in a money in the bank cash in on which wrestler Seth Rollins. Seth Rollins is incorrect. It's Roman Reigns. Okay, so they screwed it up. <laughs> they were on a roll there. Remember that was the when all of them had the title on the same night because Rollins beat Roman oh, yeah. in the main event and then Ambrose cashed in on Rollins. According to you, I mean. Uh, that was also a good match. Who knows? The Rollins and Reigns. It good was. Match, yeah. It was. TLC 2014, Dean Ambrose had a brutal match against which opponent? Very Wyatt. That was the one where the monitor blew up in his face. Nope, it's Kane. Okay? No. Figured it. No, out. Learn some things no, about wrestling. No. 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 <laughs> the monitor blew up. And it's face. funny because Bray Wyatt is on there too. <laughs> they just like to give me the options and then be like, no. <laughs> no. They're gaslighting you. <laughs> right? Chat GPT. I, I got I to Google it right now. Uh, 10. Who did Dean Ambrose face in a Falls Count Anywhere match at WrestleMania 35? Uh, he, no, no. <laughs> I knew it. No. Cause Why? He wasn't on that card because I'm pretty sure the Raw after Mania was his last match. And so this would have been right before he left. He wa- I know he wasn't on the card. Would you like to take a guess? Uh, they are saying Bobby Lashley, Drew McIntyre, Triple H, or Baron Corbin. Okay, so the funny part is all of them had different matches on. So I know that can't be right because that's when Baron Corbin retired Kurt Angle. Right? Okay. Oh Triple, my god. Right? Yep. Triple H beat Batista. I remember when Batista came back for one match? Yep. And he was like, give me what I want. Yep. That whole thing. Uh, Bobby Lashley lost to Demon Balor. Uh-huh. Yeah, so I, I remember Lashley had the weird co- yellow contacts. He did. Okay. And then Drew McIntyre lost to Roman Reigns. This is Roman's like comeback singles feud. Mm-hmm. And that's probably the least memorable. But, but those all happened. So none of them are right. I'll take Drew McIntyre. It was Baron Corbin. Okay. So no. In this alternate universe there, that ChatGPT has created. <laughs> it was going to be wrong either way. In which pay-per-view event did De- dean ambrose face seth rollins in a hell in the cell match uh hell in the cell 2014 2014 is not even one of the options okay 
So you got 15, 16, 17, or 18. We'll go 15 because it's the closest one. Even though it's not They're right. saying 16. So you're super wrong. No, because <laughs> remember Rollins faced Owens in Hell in a Cell? That, that was, remember when uh, he put... So remember they had like the double table spot on the outside. There was like the one table like flat, and then there's the one that kind of like, slanted against the cell wall and the apron. Right. And he put Owens through both of them. Yep. If you remember that. I do. Um. So that was that. That was that. That was 2016. No, Dean Ambrose so won. Was the real one. <clears throat> Dean Ambrose won the United States Championship by defeating which opponent at Extreme Rules 2013? Okay, the events, right? Nice. Um, it's Kofi. <laughs> no. Yes, it is. So wrong. He is one of the options. It's Kofi. <laughs> They said Wade Barrett. No, I don't. I'm. I don't think Wade Barrett's even ever held that title. I know he was a five-time Intercontinental Champion, and that was pretty much it. I don't think Barrett's even touched the title. Says you, okay? Chat GPT says no. <laughs> no um, it, it was Barrett. Which event featured Dean Ambrose facing AJ Styles in a TLC match for the World GI One Championship? TLC 2016. That was the one where remember Ellsworth cost him. 2016. They got it. So oh, what if they got three right out that's of three? Three out of three in a row so is their far. best. Dean Ambrose competed in a 30 minute Iron Man match against which opponent? There's already shaken his head at Roadblock 2016. No. no. Whole lot of no's. <laughs> when, when has Dean Ambrose ever been in any Iron Man match ever? I don't know. 2016 at Roadblock, no. apparently. Because, well, there's Roadblock 2016, I mentioned. That was when he faced Triple H for the title, not Fastlane. And then. If you really want to go to the roadblock end of the line, they have an Iron Man match, but that was, remember, Sasha and Charlotte? Right. And he Ambrose wasn't even on that card because that was a Raw pay-per-view. So either way, it's no. So your options are, in this fictitious Iron Man match, okay. Kevin Owens, Chris Jericho, oh. Seth Rollins, Dolph Ziggler. Let's go with Rollins. No, Kevin Owens. <laughs> That's it. Last one. It's their last chance. So they're at three out of 14 so far. Who did Dean Ambrose face in a last man standing match at Payback 2015? You're not shaking your head. No. <laughs> you are shaking your head? No. I'm almost positive that was the one where Rollins defended the title in a four-way, and it was against Rollins, Reigns, and Randall. Or sorry, not. Sorry, Rollins, Reigns, Randall, and sorry, he defended against Ambrose, Reigns, and Orton. That's what I meant to say. Uh, Randall. I'm like, who? Oh, yes. Randall, Randall Keith. Keith. Um, so, no, he did not. But so, we'll go with Seth Rollins. Just to, He's not even one of the Reigns options. Okay. You don't know anything. It's Your options are Bray Wyatt, Luke Harper, Seamus or Roman Reigns? Bray Wyatt. Seamus. No. <laughs> Not, no. So you did well, and ChatGPT did a, what did we say, 3 out of 15? Yeah. Is what they got there? That's so random. It is fun, though. I so like it's it. funny because it's full 180. It started out going, ah, oh, this is amazing. It's going to do all my trivia for me. It's going to be so easy. And it completely it's botches it, and it's almost better. <laughs> it's, it is, because... <laughs> I'm I'm better than it. Because the point is, you showcase your knowledge, and then it's funny because you're immediately. I don't even get done half the questions, and you're <laughs> already like, shaking no. your head at me. <laughs> it's, it's so bad. I, they're never gonna like. You're gonna do a Roman Reigns quiz next to me. Who who did he beat in the finals of the WWE Championship tournament? It's Seth Rollins. That's exactly. <laughs> or it'll pick someone different. It like contradicts itself sometimes too, right? So depending <laughs> and, what I ask, I'm it. pretty sure I already did because either Dean Ambrose or. Roman Reigns faced Seth Rollins, but I know neither of them did because that wasn't the Shield so Triple Threat. if you're a listener and you're enjoying the new chat GPT, because I kind of am. Let, I, I, I would am. love to hear I, I enjoy it very if much you're it. enjoying it because it's kind of fun. But anyway, You got to do like um, next time there's like, we got oh, you got to do that for SummerSlam. That'll be interesting. I will. Once it gets to pay-per-views, I'll be definitely. That'll be interesting. Oh, we could have done it for like Night of Champions or something. It's pretty fun stuff. It generates it in like. 30 seconds and it ain't right but it's fun <laughs> it ain't right but it's definitely there all right so let's move back into talking about uh the week's wrestling action in a segment where we highlight and low light whatever we watched we call it high spots and rest holds all right so the week starts with monday so that's monday night raw i really so have that's nothing you. from raw other than just mentioning that a rest hold that Raquel's teaming with Shotzi. You were right, right? Because no. they were yeah, saying mystery person and you were like, it's Shotzi, yeah. it's Shotzi. Yeah, so it's that, Shotzi. that sucks. Any, so that's that's that. Nice. Um, so Tuesday brings us NXT, which I always watch. And the high spot, I thought, kind of like retro feeling, kind of like 80s promos, but they opened the show with like mini promos from each of the women remaining in the um, women's championship tournament. So out of the four, I thought Stratton and Perez sounded pretty good. Jade and Valkyria not really sounding so much. Ly uh, Lyra needs 
Like, I really like her in ring. I think she's one of the best in ring talent they have in the women's division mm-hmm. there. But like the whole bird, I don't care. I don't understand what her thing is. Is strange, and they need to really work on it. And it, it, I think, because of that character, they're forcing her to speak in a certain way that doesn't seem natural. So it's not really working what, for what me. What is her thing supposed to be? She's like. I don't, forest I don't woman it. i don't know I'm, accumulating feathers it's it's bizarre i don't know what it is but i think she's cool she just needs a tweaking of the character but the 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 promos were interesting i thought it was a kind of a cool way to do it and then speaking of lyra i had it as a high spot not the match itself i mean the match itself was fine but she actually picked up a semifinals win here which i was not expecting um i didn't think Could jade she be oh yeah she'd be cora jade right who i thought was possibly gonna win the i guess because you need the baby face i guess that's answer, what it is i would have put it like stratton beats valkyria in the semifinals right. and then perez beats jade right and they have history and then also i think perez versus jade would be better it also feels like either one of them could win right whereas right. i don't anyways we'll get to our predictions yeah. i get i don't think jade did a ton of note in this match um lyra as always had some nice kicks and some cool suplexes but she did botch a springboard attempt really badly, and Booker didn't let it go for a little bit, which I didn't think was helpful. He really kind of focused on it. And her finishing spinning kick looked not very impactful this week. It's basically like a a black mass half speed kind of thing. It didn't uh. look didn't look great. Um but I'm surprised that she won, happy for her. Um and then afterwards though I was a bit confused because she got chop blocked by Jade and then hit with I think it was a kendo stick or whatever it was after the match so i was hoping like this isn't like she won the match but isn't able to be in the tournament right so we need to replace her so i'm not sure i haven't heard that she won't be in it but it seemed weird because it was like a vicious attack on her leg after the match so we'll see um another high spot i thought was Ilya dragunov attacking backstage uh dijak out of nowhere just a flying kick and then um, chair shots, and then Dijak gets thrown into a garage door, and Dragunov's about to do the spot they love right now where they slam the garage door on your torso, but officials come and stop him from doing that. But I thought it was a good violent attack by Dragunov because the, the segments last week were a bit strange, right? Where it's like... That was, that, was that the one where he was kidnapped? The, and no, it's not even that. It's like he was... Volu- it was like consensual beatings. Like he's like, yeah, I'm willing for you to beat oh. me like over and, and torture me, and I'm fine with it. So this made a bit more sense to me. Um, something I didn't like was the use of Axiom this week. You heard who he lost to, right? I think we talked about oh, yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he loses quickly to Daba Kato, which the match was quick and Axiom was largely dominated. He did get a couple of flurries in there and his yes kicks actually looked really good and impactful. But um, I guess the choice was because Axiom can make Kato's offense look strong, which he did. But I think Axiom deserves better than this. Uh, and better than what happened after the match because Daba Kato continued to beat Axiom down. And did you see what happened there? Who came um, in for the rescue? Yes. Scripts. No. Right? Sorry. Well, yeah. Reggie. The crowd's chanting Reggie. They're not. It, no, it was Reggie, though. But they're not saying he was Reggie, I don't think. They were just like, the crowd knows who it is oh, as they were yeah. chanting Reggie. Really? So. That's what the caption said on Instagram. So that's so I, oh, did it? So yeah. they're acknowledging it is Reggie. I, I just. I think so, kind of. My fear is Axiom and Reggie are going to be a tag team, and I don't want that. Ooh. Just for Axiom. Axiom's awesome. Yeah, Axiom's kind of cool. I mean, his character, whatever, but in ring, he's terrific. So anyways, I wasn't happy that he was the person. Like, you could use ha- Javier Bernal, or you could use one of Blade and Anafe in this role, right? I don't know why. Maybe not Bernal, because be you need a face. But... I guess, oh, wait, yeah. like, sorry, you mean someone to tag with? No, somebody to get killed by Daba Kato. Oh, okay, then yeah, you could use Bernal. Then. Didn't sorry, have to I be Axiom. I like someone to save Axiom. No. Um, another rest hold is the Tony D'Angelo interviewed by the police stuff that I'm not really loving, and to me it just feels like Stax is setting him up, maybe, which is a really quick. I actually used that for my one of my predictions. Oh so no! I'll, I'll get into that later. Uh, I really like Heel Braun. I think he's continuing to shine here. It was just a little segment where he talks about basically he wants to burn NXT down c- for the way he was Whoa. treated. Whoa! He wants to burn it down. Burn it down, because he was the face of the company and doing everything right for the company and the fans, face and they still the started to turn on him. So he now wants to humiliate Mello in front of his friends and family. I actually thought this was a pretty great heel promo, got quite a bit of time, and they were running highlights as Braun was sort of talking, and he really feels like a main event heel, so um, 
and they keep going back to that highlight of him spearing Mew Mellow out of the air, which looked that, awesome. Yeah, that's a good one. It's a try. worthy uh, thing to replay a bunch. So he sounds great, man. I've come uh, full circle on Braun. I'm quite enjoying heel Braun right now. Um, Wrestled, I thought the Gallus segment, they were in the ring. We talked about it being bathed in a green light. I thought it was an awkward kind of weak segment. They're just doing generic talk and diamond mine interrupt. I didn't think Gallus were great here. There was, and then the lighting didn't help at all. Brutus sort of struggled through a couple lines at one point. Julius basically made a fat... I think I saw him. I thought his facial hair looked weirder. Julius made a fat joke, and then they basically brawled. And then Stax comes out to join the Creeds to balance When I first saw who made the save, I was confused. I was like... I me too. Tell who it was because like, it just doesn't make sense to me. I didn't even think of stacks at first until me I like looked at the thing. So I, I think these two teams will have a really good match because I feel like Gallus has upped their game recently, pretty much since they like switched their finisher to being much cooler. I feel like they're doing a better Is it still job a thing? in the ring. Yeah. Nice. Um, I have high expectations for the match, but the segment I did not enjoy. A rest hold for me is the North American title storyline right now with um. Wesley and Tyler oh, really? Bate, basically. Um, just because it's like... So in this, um, Tyler Bate beat Eddie Thorpe in a decent match. Again, Thorpe is not sort of wowing me. But anyways, Joe Gacy comes out, attacks Tyler Bate after the match. Lee tries to help, but Bate, he hits Bate accidentally, right? So it's this whole idea that Lee and Bate are friends. And so they haven't been... First of all, they haven't been friends very long. That's only been established for a I couple thought it, weeks. Yeah, right. Wasn't it just like he was helping him because of uh, Dempsey and right. Dulac? Right. And so they meditated together last week or whatever, too. So And all Tyler Bate did was let Lee know that, yes, I'd be interested in a title shot. And this is like the betray- greatest injustice or betrayal ever. You should have just ever. told me at first. Right? So Lee is acting like this is at just a giant betrayal, and it doesn't really make any sense, because why wouldn't you assume everybody would like a title shot, right? I mean, it especially doesn't... with how some things have been, like, because they did, like, a bunch of segments like that, right? Like, and he's the fighting champion, and he'll take on anybody. So... Why does he even care? Right. At least so... Bates being respectful about it, like... Yes, and I, I guess the idea is that Gacy's driving a wedge between them, but this story's been on, like, hyperspeed, it feels like. And right. if they have the idea for a story, they just should have extended it by a quite a bit instead of condensing it to, like, three weeks. Because mm-hmm. it's just, like, what, they're friends? Oh, I guess. What, they're breaking up over nothing? Oh, okay. So I don't really yeah. care. Like, the match should be good, but I didn't enjoy it. Yeah, I'm looking forward to the match. Um, Noam Dar versus Nathan Fraser in a just a regular match, not Heritage Cup rules. I thought this was a really good match. So it's weird because Dar is, uh, even though he's a small guy, he's kind of trying to slow things down with technical wrestling strikes and submissions. And Fraser, who's just crazy fast, right? He's flying around the ring, hitting cool looking stuff. I told you he did AJ Styles, like back flipping into the reverse DDT and like it was flawless. Um, But anyways, at one point, Dragon Lee comes out and he's sort of touching the cup. So Dar goes out to ringside. And then as he comes back in the ring, oh no, sorry, he turns around into a suicide dive from Fraser, then back in the ring for a phoenix splash and fraser wins which i guess i wasn't expecting but i should have been as soon as it wasn't heritage cup rules right that it's probably telegraphing fraser picking up a win Mm -hmm. here so um i again didn't expect fraser to win and the baby face coming out and costing a heel a win is a bit strange right that's kind of backwards i mean we just saw that in AEW, i guess the match was really good and noam dar looked really strong like he's a complete wrestler to me other than obviously he's small i think he's awesome in the ring he's super entertaining anything he does so i quite like this match um there's a really cool segment with just a package with high uh mellow back in his hometown basically of in boston or boston area i don't know if they're exactly in boston proper or not but whatever so he's doing the rounds going to various interviews um with people at, at a celtics game etc just like getting the star treatment with the championship right so it's it was a very slick I package think i saw that like he was on like he was guest appearing on shows and stuff. yeah, yeah and I it makes him that. feel like a star here so they again not quite as big a star as when he was the heel north american champion but this helped i thought and it was a really cool looking package yeah i'm hoping he gets back to that at some point yeah and then you had braun coming back to heal it up more he cut a nice heel promo before now he's back to attacking people we sort of got a nothing match between um, friends and partners, Hank Walker and Tank Ledger, that ended. Remember what the finish was in this? I think you yeah, were they around. did the double cross body spot, and then he <laughs> pinned them off of that. I don't know if I've ever seen that. So it was props to them for creativity. Innovation, <laughs> yeah. So, anyways, Broad Braun comes out and spears both of them, 
and his spears are looking good. And I thought this was a good use of like a meaningless match to further highlight Braun's sort of heel run here. Um, I think you saw some of this, and it was not surprising a rest hold. It was Gigi and JC. Oh, yeah, that was bad. So they bless us with a lengthy live interaction here. Neither one of them sounds very good, and they just, in a nutshell, right, they rehash all the same stuff that's been going on. And to me, like, I thought it was, it felt, like, really disjointed and, like, janky, because, like, they give neither, like... Anytime the other says something, they give it no time to breathe. And right. Just right onto their next talk. Rapid like, fire. Like, yeah, really. Like, it was really weird. And it's all the same stuff that's been going on for so long and has never really connected with me or many people, I would suggest. And the bottom line to all of it is we're getting a weaponized cage match next week, not on the pay-per-view. This will be on, on NXT next week. So it just feels like these two are, like, trapped in this death spiral, right? This isn't interesting. Neither of them are strong performers in or out of the ring, I would suggest. Um, so it makes it even worse. It feels like we've done all of this and we've circled back down to it. We're running back something that didn't work in the first place and just hoping a cage and weapons are going to make it okay. And maybe the match will be entertaining. There's definitely a chance of that happening because, uh, in my opinion, these two could use weapons, right? Instead of yeah, having to be the, rely on their technical abilities, but, um, or I lack just, thereof. I just don't care. Uh, then, um, Von Wagner squashed Luca Crucifino and then power bombs him through the announce table. So listen. Or on the announce table. Yes, it was. It wasn't through you, right? Because you were here for this too. I think Luca Crucifino is going to be like a guilty pleasure of mine because I feel like it's Kiana. Remember when I was kind of in on Kiana James because it felt like they were leaning into the ridiculous businesswoman thing? Yeah. I think they're doing that with Crucifino. As soon as he came out in that ring gear, right? Because he's wrestling oh, yeah. in like a... Uh, a dress shirt with no sleeves, a tie, and a vest. Like, they're carrying that. Like, I feel like they know it's ridiculous. Has to be. And as long as I they know that, the I'm okay with it. the initial segment. That was kind of interesting. Yeah, so... Um, but this... The part I didn't like about this is it's, again, this picture of Vaughn with all the staples in his head as a little kid. And so, like... What's the big deal? With Robert Stone has it in his pocket, and it's like it's like Undertaker's urn or something. I, to me, it was like um, it makes Wag- Wagner angry. It reminded you know? me of Kane in May nineteenth, because anytime someone said May nineteenth, Kane would go ballistic. Right. To me, it's that because Crucifino's trying to get the picture out of Stone's pocket, and then he ends up taking a power bomb on the table. So I don't know. It's the, and Stone's trying to stop him. They they're giving Vaughn many chances right and it's just not working so just stop well, like you get many many chances because he's a free agent do this to somebody else i don't know anyways i thought the main event was a high spot not a blow away match by any means but a good 10 minute tv match and honestly either woman could have won this one lots of pinfall attempts by roxanne early on and then stratton of course using her power advantage to take control i told you in the minute because i think you were there that Roxanne Perez's suicide dives, I called her, what, the anti-Escobar? Yeah, I think I saw it, too. He goes with, like, reckless abandon as fast as possible, and she, looks like... like he's trying to dart them. She, like, slows down and clearly kind of jumps on to people, whereas he looks like he's going through them. But anyways, um, and then it annoyed me, too, because Stratton caught her on one of them and then didn't do anything. Like, Perez escaped it or whatever. Anyways, um, Stratton ends up countering the Pop Rocks into her rolling senton, which leads now to her very beautiful moonsault, and Tiffany Stratton wins this after 10 minutes. Um, good match, not amazing. I think Stratton would be the heavy favorite, right, to win the title, which we'll talk about when we yeah. preview it. And I, for me, that's the right choice. Lyra has not had nearly the attention. I think Lyra is a better in-ring performer, probably, but Stratton is the total package and improving right, at a which rapid is pace. better to have for a champion. I think so. Um, she's just getting better all around, so why not see how she does with the title, right? This is developmental. She's really close to probably being sent to main roster, so let's see what she can do with the title. Uh, moving over to Impact, opening match was awesome. Mike Bailey, Chris Sabin, 12-minute match. Lots of cool offense and counters. Uh, Sabin hit a sunset bomb to the floor. You know how they always tease that spot, but yeah. then never give it to you? So they hit it there. Nice. He ended up winning with a muscle buster and the cradle shock. Really awesome, fast-paced match. Built really nicely. Multiple believer, believable near falls, which the crowd really got into. Awesome start to the show. But then we get a rest hold where Taylor Wilde squashes Jessica in like a minute, maybe less. And then we get more Undead Realm stuff, which 
that hourglass runs out that was tracking how long they could stay. And wow, what a what a surprise. Courtney Rush appears. Have you seen, has that ever happened before, like the whole Courtney Rush thing? I don't remember it. But they said she's been Rosemary for seven years. So it's been probably beyond me remembering it. Hmm. So, yeah, this is Rosemary. Not as Rosemary. It's Courtney Rush. So she shows up, clears house, cleans house, coven run out run off and jessica is thrilled to have rush and they hug each other and it's great and then right after the commercial break they come back to them and jessica isn't sure what the deal with courtney rush is but russ says she is kind of rosemary but not really and it's sort of like some sort of possession sort of thing um great my favorite sort of stuff it's like so, rosemary you know i'm jessica. loving this right it, so i don't know since she's here they're gonna go on an adventure and jessica is excited about this i don't like any of this but at least rosemary is gone and can try something new or whatever but this whole undead realm magical coming back from the dead stuff is dumb is dumb we got two more really good singles matches i just kind of lumped them together the in-ring stuff the last couple of weeks has been pretty good this one was rich swan beat alan angels in about a seven minute match with his second rope 450 splash Angels, I think, is easily the best wrestler in the design. Not a super high bar, but their group is still. Don't say that about Khan. Their group is still doing nothing. And then we had, I think I told you, Chris Bay defeated John Skyler with the Art of Finesse after 12 minutes. And I thought this was a very good match. Skyler got lots of time to showcase his talent. He's good. And they talk about he's actually been wrestling quite a while, right? Despite being new to Impact. Both of them looked really good in this. And the, again, I'm happy because they're raising the profile of the good hands here. They continue, even though he lost, right? He got a lengthy competitive match against top competition. So they're obviously starting to position the uh, good hands a little bit higher on the card, which I'm fine with. Also liked Killer Kelly and Masha are just brawling in the back. Masha looks vicious and is choking Killer Kelly with an electrical cord by the end of this. I thought it looked good. Furthers the, both of them just love to inflict pain and take pain so it makes sense i guess um did i tell you about fandango's new gimmick sorry no, dirty dango you did not i i liked it it's quite a turn he's ditched the comedy stuff completely because he's been revealed as the one who attacks santino right and he basically i'm going off memory because i didn't really take notes something about instead of the attitude era so he whatever he was around for the attitude era or a fan of it i can't remember what he said but this is the gratitude era where he said, like, guys are just happy to be there and happy to have a contract and aren't really doing anything to get noticed or mm -hmm. push the limits of whatever. So he's going to start doing that, basically. It was a much more serious, like, I'm now going to just do whatever I want here and there's nothing any of you can do about it. So I'm, I'm kind of up for a change for him because the comedy stuff doesn't isn't my favorite, right? So we'll see where it goes. So it's Dirty Dango. I think he faced Hendry on the pre-show for the he digital did, yeah. thing. And Santino came back. Oh, and I think I think I saw he got uh, DQ'd Fandango. Oh, all right. I think because he doesn't sense. really care about that title. Maybe I don't know. I mean, who does? Um, and rest hold, I thought was the slow long the oh sorry show long PCO is out of the championship angle. So this was the idea that I don't know if I missed it last week or it was somewhere else, but that Macklin smashed a cinder block with a sledgehammer on PCO. Yeah, and so I, I saw that. The idea is PCO's out, and that. Macklin's going to come to the ring and announce his own opponent, and he announces Champagne Singh, ha, ha, ha. Demore comes out, and what a surprise, PCO is actually fine to wrestle. So PCO comes out, take out Macklin's lackeys. I, it's all just hokey and doesn't feel like a main event storyline to me. I like Macklin more than a lot of people do. This title reign is not starting out hot. I talk about it every week. I don't know who the big challenges are for him, but this whole PCO thing and him aligning himself with Champagne Singh is not, and who's the other one? Um, um, Mahabali Shara. Oh, Shara is not a main event thing. It's not working for me. It's making your title feel less than it should, in my opinion. But anyways, um, and then I did make one quick note because I started watching ROH. I told you I really liked the opener and I was surprised. It was Mark Briscoe and JD Drake. All oh, right, you did tell me. And Briscoe obviously won, but JD Drake's good, man. Like we've said this before, especially when you look at him, and I hate to say that, but the stuff he can do, he just looks like your overweight beer drinking neighbor, right? But he's pretty mm -hmm. awesome. And it got a lot more time than I expected. He looked great, I thought. Briscoe won with the froggy bow, but I don't know if there's room for JD Drake to do more, but I think he's really good. I like him. And he just looks different from everybody else. Remember he had the else. WWN title when Theory was Evolved Champion. <laughs> right. 
way back when. He did. 2019. Yeah, he was in Evolve, and I liked his matches there, too. Um, the ones I saw, I didn't see a ton. So, do you have anything from SmackDown? A little bit. Yeah. Um, a high spot, I guess, just as I was scrambling. Uh, I was AJ Styles beating Karrion Cross just because Karrion Cross lost. <laughs> You're just so happy to report that, eh? Yeah, just I think it's funny it, they're, how bad they're doing with him. At the uh, indie show last night, there were some autographed figures there, and uh, they were selling an autographed Kay- um, what's his face? Elite eighty five Karrion Cross, right for hundred and fifty dollars. I think. <laughs> nope. No, Nobody's uh, buying that. I don't think. No, I don't think so. Um. And then uh, kind of high spot, LA Knight beat Boogs. At least LA Knight's winning on TV. And done with Boogs, right? So that's I would good. hope so. Yes, good. Um, then the last one was high spot. Uh, Kevin Owens promo to the Usos on the KO show. He hosted. He was supposed nice. to host Roman Solo, but then Roman didn't come out, so Usos ended up there. I don't know how that happened. Um, uh, he was talking about Sammy's. He's been right about everything, and he's right that they deserve better. They went from being the best tag team in WWE to being Aaron boys for Roman. Uh, and then Jimmy said they are the best team in the world, and when it comes to them, he, and comes to the day ones, he is the tribal chief, and that got a good reaction from the crowd. And then uh, Heyman's face was Heyman's reaction was priceless. Of course, like you know he's like uber loyal to Roman, and yep. so his reaction was awesome. Heyman's Heyman's awesome. And then when Roman Reigns hit, uh, Roman's music hit after that. I thought that was a perfect moment. And then later on, uh, Jay kind of, but mostly Jimmy were hesitant to hand Roman the tag titles. It's also nice telling that story yeah exactly I see something going on later for sure all right well i guess that's going to bring us to we'll throw in a bonus segment here where we preview a whole bunch of shows from this weekend um so yeah it is our weekend preview i guess and i'll throw in a little bit of music right about here okay so full disclosure i have looked at cards and thought about things but didn't make any notes so I'm sort of in between where I usually am. Either I haven't thought about it at all, or I've thought about it in detail. So I'm somewhere in between. Right. We'll do the one that's already started at the time of recording. Okay. But as at the time of recording, we've not seen anything, so these picks I, are still valid. Correct. I haven't seen anything. Um. So we'll start with Becky Lynch versus Trish Stratus. Um. I took Lynch because we don't need Trish winning anything big in 2023 because this is this is not Jeff Jarrett in AEW. I know, and I did some research, and there's some people saying it might be. It might be Trish, but That's so dumb. it doesn't make sense to me, not that I'm following what's going on. So I will also take Becky Lynch because I don't know why you would put someone... I, I, like, I just don't feel like Stratus is here for a super long time. So how does her beating Lynch help anybody? So mm-hmm. I could be wrong, but I'll take Lynch as yeah. well. Uh, next we get Gunther versus, versus Mustafa Ali. I <laughs> uh, think it's pretty obvious it's Gunther. I'm glad Ali's getting a spotlight, but there's no way he's ending the title run. And he's going to be, like, the crowd favorite and yeah. whatnot, which and is I'm... great for Gunther because, yeah, it's Gunther, right? Sure. I don't, I, I'll be annoyed if they do, not that I don't like Ali, but this is not yeah. the place. I mean, I would, fa- I would, like, flame them again for another hometown loss. Or I, He's not, well, he's from Chicago, technically. But right. He's still got the heritage, but anyways, like, kind of home and home field loss, but, like, Gunther. Yeah, it has to be Gunther. Um, Ripley Natalia. SmackDown women's title. Uh, Rhea Ripley. Don't think we need Ripley, to yeah, discuss that think. one too much. Um, uh, yeah, no if Natalia we... beat anyone for a title at this stage, I'd be annoyed, let alone Ripley, who's been on a Correct. hot streak. Right, exactly. Like, Ripley's doing great by most accounts, I think, and Natalia is Natalia. Yeah. So, no. So, next we have Belair versus Asuka for the Raw title. And so, this is where I, like, I talked a bit more about stuff, because, like, the women's titles are kind of a mess right now. The two Raw women in this match mm-hmm. are... Oh, sorry. No, sorry. The two Raw women, were, which were the last match, were fighting for the SmackDown title. <laughs> yeah. And these two women on SmackDown are fighting for the Raw title. Triple H has to sort his crap out because this makes no sense. At this point, I would almost rather they do a stupid belt swap because at least then the titles are set straight. Yes. Because this is almost, I would argue this is worse than having a belt swap. So no matter who wins, it's not on the right show. Right. Like literally they're opposite. It's the stupidest thing. And anyways, I'm going to take Belair to retain because it, she seems like a really good champ, and they clearly won't bag Asuka. If they were going to do it, they should have just done it at Mania. You know what I mean? Like, 100%. If they were going to do it, I don't know why you would wait till here. Feels It just it just feels like Belair is going to right. keep being so, the champion. I have no and reason like, to believe. Me, the Asuka moment passed. I mean, I, I know so. the build to Mania wasn't great, but if you were going to do it, you should have just pulled the trigger then. And I love Asuka, but 
It doesn't right. feel like she's poised to be a champion, mm-hmm. so it no. seems like just like no. status quo Bel Air. And I like Bel Air too, so that's fine. Uh, next week, Cody Rose or Brock Lesnar 2, Electric Boogaloo. All right. We, um, so I feel like there's a fair chance that Lesnar gets his win back here for a third match. But I think that kind of undoes what his win at Backlash for Co- the Cody win. Yep. And after the whole WrestleMania fiasco, I think they need to keep Cody as strong as possible if they want him to stay in the running for anything. Plus, they're running the broken arm storyline. Yeah, I heard um, that today. So they could really sell Cody as like a resilient babyface because he already won the Hell in a Cell with a torn pack. So they could have him win this True. match with a broken arm. True. And just really like kind of that really pushed Cody up a bit. Um, so I'm going to take Cody because I think that's just the right move. But I wouldn't be surprised if I'm wrong here. So. See, I actually agree agree with your first take, which was that Lesnar wins here against. I think that's to go to a match likely. at SummerSlam or whatever the yeah, next. That's that's thing completely is. likely. Um, and I think they'll use the broken arm as the excuse, like I to keep Cody too. strong, right? Like, of course he lost; he had a broken arm, and when he's healthy, he gets the third and final or the, the that, second yeah. win. So I'll take uh, Brock there. That's fair. And I'm not even reaching. That was going to be my pick, anyways. Mm-hmm. Works out um next we get zane and owens versus roman mm. and solo this one's tough the i think tag titles yeah but not really because <laughs> well i think it would be genuinely the funniest thing ever to give roman four belts i will have a nice little chuckle at that um i'd also hate it because that's objectively a bad call like that's just it's stupid He's had a thousand days as a world champ. He doesn't need tag titles because that he's barely going to defend because that's bogging down two divisions in one. Right. Right. And him and Solo are not a tag team. I like, I like the combination for storyline purposes, and that's why I'm not complaining about it. But like, they can't have a title. They're not a tag team. It doesn't work. Um, that's like, it's not how the story needs to go. He can celebrate the one thousand days, but he doesn't need a tag win. Uh, Kano and Sammy deserve a good run with the titles. This is their first like big challenge with the titles, but they deserve more than this. I think their win, their title win, deserves more than this. But could they drop them and win them back quickly? I think that kind of undoes some of their progress. I don't think that's necessary. But again, who's in charge? Vince. Yes, but <laughs> and he's he's smart about this. Triple H is running creative still, though. I guess. Like Vince is doesn't seem to be huge. Right? I haven't felt Vince's influence a ton lately. Yeah. So we're smooth sailing so far all right you'll not, con- not to jinx it you convince me i'll take them as well yeah okay yeah i would i wasn't quite sure because i could see them just smooth. loving the idea of roman with i, all I the think that would be pretty comedically humorous but and additionally all, due to all the discourse in the building i could see the usos being a negative factor for roman solo whether that's intended true. or not true i think they'll play a factor and i think that's gonna it could be this roman so right. and then that'll facilitate that possible roman and solo versus usos match that makes sense and then you can still have roman and solo tag again but they won't they won't ruin tag titles uh, and then uh, last, we have the opener, which I thought would be the main event, but nope, because this title is what? Secondary. Correct. Uh, Seth Rollins versus AJ Styles for the World Heavyweight title. Um, I'm, taking, I'm taking Seth freaking Rollins, and I'm saying that with enthusiasm, not because I think that's a good name. <laughs> um, m- my boy, he was one of the most consistently good guys when Roman was busy not being there. Uh, he had a pretty good 2022, despite he'd lost like 90% of the matches. Yeah. Like, not many guys can do that. No, he's high He's profile. got like constant credibility. He's, he does. He can put on a good match with pretty much anyone on the roster. And, and Raw's got a pretty nice like feel to guys. Like he had Nakamura. He already faced Bowler. You could do that again. Like, um, I don't that There's a, Cody, I guess, if you really wanted to. But like, um, and they want the new title to be a, a prominent workhorse world title world um like which is he's, either he's of these a no-brainer guys. choice yeah AJ Styles could do a good too but like he to me like the difference is Rollins is over as hell right now like the sing along my s- stuff is maker. over I feel like just like Rollins is hot right looking like, in he's positioned to be a right. champion he's he's AJ, hot on it you need to do something yeah, right no res- disrespect to him but he no. just came back from Agreed. an injury he feels like a weird choice to win right now yes i'd really like him to face roman as a challenger i really like that but i don't think he needs to be a champion right now and it's been a long ass time since rollins had a world title so right. like i'm also taking my boy seth. Bone, right? i'm taking seth it just feels like like who's been presented like a champion lately it's him and yeah, it'd be absolutely and if you're trying to like get this belt meaningful right out of the gate rollins is your guy. not that aj's not a big name but he hasn't been the focus of anything no. major lately so i think you got to go set and rollins is technically the only guy in the title run that didn't lose to roman right he did he never lost so i'll take seth as well that, that match was awesome it was all right so night of champions 2023 aka new blood money Mm-hmm. is in the books i mean that's going on as we speak it is but we haven't watched anything yet so the picks still stand they do whatever we get Official. right we get right if we get them wrong oh well um so we'll move to wwe's other p 
PLE this weekend, which will be tomorrow night, which is NXT Battleground, a, mm-hmm. a pay-per-view concept they haven't used since 2017 with the Punjabi prison with Jinder Mahal. <laughs> Yeah. Amazing. So they're uh, reviving the name for NXT purposes. Right. They used to have it on the main roster. That was the second last Battleground. Then Battleground was also the Shield Triple Threat. Right. Mm-hmm. Um. So we're gonna start um with Dragonov versus Dijak, the last man standing match. Yeah, this um, one should be brutal. I picked Dragonov because I feel like he would only get hurt from a loss here, and Dijak will be kind of the same either way. Hundred percent. From what I've seen. Hundred percent agree taking Dragonov because. He not that he needs a win more, but he again he positioning wise he can't have a loss. Dijak's just kind of the guy that has good matches and is there, but yeah. Dragonov feels like someone they want to focus on going forward. So I right. will take. It's Dragunov. not that he needs a win; he just he can't really take a loss. And that should be a pretty vicious mm-hmm. match, honestly. Yeah, uh, it should be good. Mm-hmm. Uh, next we have the North American three way, which is Wesley, Joe Gacy, and Tyler Bate. Um, I could see like a potential like surprise switch here with Gacy or Bate, but I think it really just makes more sense for West to keep it here. He does. I would like Bate with another title, um, but this doesn't really feel like it's built to a title change. No, I agree. Right? Like, um, from what I've seen, so I'll take Lee to retain. And, but. yeah, and Lee's, they're really leaning into this. He's the longest reigning champion, and he's a fighting champion. I don't know if he's the longest yet, but he's definitely had the most defenses. It doesn't feel like this is where he loses the title. Again, partly because the Bate story's been so fast-forwarded. If you want to slow this down and tell that story, then it might be believable, but I think Lee retains yeah. here, too. Right. Um, okay, uh, next we have the Women's Championship Tournament Final. Yep. Stratton versus Valkyria. I think Stratton makes more sense here. She's it just feels more built. It's kind of like the Rollins thing, right? Mm-hmm. Like she just feels like more like yes. it, you know. It just and I don't makes think that Lyra's character is ready to be. That's what it, I was thinking. Kind of like, weird. Yeah, uh, whereas, Stratton seems more complete. Whereas Stratton time. will look amazing with the gold. At Lyra, it would almost look strange. I feel like, mm-hmm. although you go with the bird finding a shiny object, I guess. But anyways, uh, it's gonna be Stratton. I'm pretty confident. You carry, never know. She should carry but... the bell out in like a bird's nest instead of the pirate chest that Kyrie Sane did. Right. Um, so yeah, I think it's Stratton's time, right. and I'm f- totally fine with that. All right. So next we have the tag title match, which I had to add in midweek because I they added that to the card. Mm-hmm. But um, so it's Gals versus the Creed Brothers, and here's where my I get a little fantasy booking here, which is weird for NXT considering I don't really watch it, but nonetheless. So I was gonna take the Creeds, but then I had an idea, and so you mentioned how you thought Stacks framed Tony D for what happened, I do. right? And that got me thinking. So since Stax assisted them on NXT, and like I know they kind of like declined the, like more after, but maybe he'll come out to even the odds again when Joe Coffey keeps interfering, mm-hmm. like just to kind of like keep him at bay, you know, that kind of whole thing. And then everything will seem good for the Creeds to get their titles back. They're about to get their win, but then Tony D shows up. Um, he got released, uh, and he's pissed off because <laughs> he found out that Stax framed him, right? And it will be explained on NXT after that's yes. that's not my problem. Um, <laughs> and they start brawling around, which causes a distraction. Gals eco to win, just because I think that'll be interesting. Yeah, I'm. This one is tough. Like I almost picked the crease, but I, at the same time, like I thought that fantasy booking would be kind of interesting. And then yeah. also to me, like I feel like the crease getting their titles back because they would be good champions. But like they haven't like this isn't really a blood feud, is it? Like no. it's not like no, it's at least like... not yet. They, they showed up at the bar. They were drinking at the bar one time together, and now it's just like they kind of wanted a title shot. So, like, I'm not... Creeds are awesome, and they should have a lengthy title reign, but I don't know if this is when it is. I'm kind of... This one's kind of hard to pick, and I... Gallus has been better lately, so I don't know... Hmm. And I think there's the dynamic. I don't know who the heels are here, but yes, I feel like there's something going on with Stacks and that whole thing. Um, I'll take Gallus retains as well. Mm. I, I won't be surprised to be wrong on that one. Me too, but but it just doesn't feel yeah. like the Creed's time yet. Mm-hmm. So I'll take Gallus. Uh, next we got Dar versus Dragon Lee for the Heritage Cup. Um, yep. I'm taking Dar because I love Dar. It's and Dar. He he fits better with the cup, and I don't think Dragon Lee needs it right now because exactly he's already taken like a loss or two. Exactly. So it's not like we're breaking. That he's not on a roll. Here. No. Um, so I think we're fine. And I also think I'm taking Dar as well, that Dar retains here and then it becomes Nathan Fraser going, Listen, I beat you in a regular match. I want it and I wouldn't then hate we Fraser run that back and that's, that's okay. awesome. Fraser right? could take it if I if you really And I want. also think like Dar's so great with that cup, like he carries that's it like a child thinking, right? and he's he just talks too to it, it and he so he it fits him perfectly. And again, like you said, Dragon Lee is not on a hot streak, so he can take another mm-hmm. loss here. Should be a cool match, mm-hmm. but I take Dar. Him having the Heritage Cup a second time because like he didn't really win it again. It's like when um 
Bate showed up with the NXT UK title before his title change aired. And they go out of their way to talk about how he's a two-time cup whatever, whatever. And it's like, yeah, just because you gave it to him, you didn't actually win it the yeah, second time. Weird. I'm but... not complaining because I love anyway, Dark. Me too. But like, uh, it's it still, is weird. It's a nitpick. Revisionist history. It's it's a nitpick, you know? Yeah. Um. Then finally, Carmelo Hayes versus Braun Breaker for the NXT title. I took Melo because I can't imagine the rain end so soon, even though Breaker's different. I think there's a chance, but I don't I can't imagine that. I don't I'm trying to decide if it's enough for have we picked all the same so far on this show? No, I don't think so. We've got a difference already? Uh no. We were all the same, right? Yeah. So I feel like I'm giving you, you a win head, here. You wanna hedge your bets on this one? But uh I feel like there's a chance they put it on heel brawn and then go back to like babyface Melo chasing it, but it does kind of hurt Melo's reign. But it hasn't. I'm uh, hoping he does like a punk thing where he holds it for a while and right. turns heel mid range. For the good of the show, I'll take Braun just to, so that somebody wins this because otherwise right. we tie. Right. We're hedging it on the Because I think event. we have one different on the other one too, right? Because uh, I, took, Col- I took Brock. You took Brock. Okay, so I know this is different. We both took Rollins. Uh, we both took KO and Sammy. You took L- Brock. And so then we both took Blair. Yeah. Okay, so we're hedging At these on. At least someone will win, and, win or lose. All right, that's interesting. Okay. okay, we'll see about AEW then. Yep. Okay, so Double or Nothing 2023. Um, so I assume we're definitely going to differ on this one. Actually, we could. Uh, the TBS title match. Um, so I, I said Taya because I feel like she kind of has to win here. If she loses, if she already lost once and she loses again, she loses any credibility yep. of winning the title from Jade. And if she can't take it, who can? I and at this point, like, just give me something else. I'm also taking Taya because just anything else. I think they think that this is the person we believe can do it and blah, blah, blah. So I'm not I'm sure. I'm more like, just change it. Yeah, so I think this is the time. Although, I also was pretty sure Statlander was going to be the one. So I, I don't even know take... Statlander's coming back, though. All right, I'll take, I'll take Jade, Ooh. just to make it different. I, my initial, I just switched right now because I was going to take Taya for similar reasons, but I'll take Jade, thinking that Statlander's close and that they're saving it it's for so Statlander. It's so likely that Jade will win, too, because she's just like, there's a bunch of times where I've thought she would win, and she's just right. like, nope, Jade wins, lol. <laughs> exactly. You know? So I'll take it's Jade. It's like the Roman wins, lol, except it's Jade. And Cena. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Wardlow, Christian. Um, I took Wardlow. Um, as much as I would like for a Tyler to be over again, this doesn't feel like it, and I would also be annoyed if he had another stop-start run, because his last Tyler run was three days. I agree. Uh, Christian can hopefully carry him to a solid match, but that's all I'm expecting, as well as a title retention here. Yeah, it doesn't feel like Christian's taking the belt here. It's just a quality yeah. defense for Wardlow on a pay per view, yeah. I guess. So. Also, I saw the um they just advertised House of Black have an open challenge for the pay per view, but I didn't think it's worth putting on because it's an a an open challenge. B they'll probably win. Right. I would. So like I'm not so. I'm not including that here. And I'm imagining the Wardlow match. It's uh he shows some aggression or violence that aren't approves of and the mentorship is effective and blah 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 yeah, something like that he beats christian in his um, own match i saw like when i looked up a match card i never found this on like i never found like the match graphic for it mm-hmm. but i saw it like when i looked my googled the card when i was prepping this so if it's not if it's not like on the show then i won't count in like our final uh, gotcha. Final tally, but uh, Hardy Party versus the Firm. I'm pretty sure it's on the show, but I'm not 100 percent sure. So I just took Hardy Party because I don't. The really individual care. names would be like um, Cassidy, Isaiah, and um, Hardy's versus Firm. I think would be. I think Cassidy, I'm pretty sure it's Page and the Guns. I feel like Isaiah Cassidy's out and it was replaced. No, he's I... Brother Zay. Oh, he just changed his name. Is that what you saw? Yeah, I didn't know who yeah, that he, was. He, it's him. Okay, he, it's him. Of course. I'm uh, taking the Hardy Party because we need this contractual bull to get. I'll over take with. Hardy Party too, with no thought or care. Oh, I, I barely. I, just I neither them. care nor put thought into it. I didn't. I just put Hardy Party. I guess I don't really care. Yeah, same. So I next we got the, the Blackjack Battle Royal for the international title, mm-hmm. and so it might be a little risky, but I'm gonna take Switchblade on this. Wow. Um, I think it would help legitimize him in AEW, and it would be he would be a worthy guy to beat Cassidy. If you want to end the reign, you can't tell me he's a bad pick, right? And he is also international. Uh, he can even have Juice help him to keep Cassie a little stronger. And he's got like kind of the New Japan ties. So you could have him defending against someone from New Japan at Forbidden Door. Like I think right. Jay White's a really good pick there. I could see Cassie eking out the win here, but I think if I think this is a good place to do a title change because like you can have the Battle Royal. Just it's too much for Cassie. Right? Like he's been defending every week. Basically, he's had yeah. Or he's at least had a match every week. And now like twenty other guys, it's gonna get too much for him. All his injuries are gonna mount up. And I think Jay White and Bullet Club Gold could take advantage here. 
It's so. possible. I'm taking uh, Orange Cassidy to retain. Right. I think it just All furthers right. that story of like, it just doesn't. I could see it either that way. This I is could where see you it. end that story. Like, I could see it either furthering the story, right. like you're saying, or being the payoff to the story. Right. So I think it could work either way. I'm going to take Jay White because I've been fantasizing him as the international champion, yeah. and I think it could work really well. So that's, I'll take Cassidy to retain. I just That's my uh, Hail Mary there. All right. Um, I, I like see. it. Um, next, we get FTR versus Jay Lee and Jeff Jarrett uh, for the tag titles yeah, with it's, Briscoe. It's um, FTR. F- FTR. If it's not FTR, I'll They're not literally losing here. lose my crap. They are not losing. Like it, Pretty it, confident it, in that one. Uh, Hater versus Storm. Uh, I'll take Hater. Because uh, I didn't know about the injury stuff, so that's not... <sighs> Yeah, I don't know, right? Like, if she's that injured and they need to... I'll I've, take Cater, because I don't... I've heard either... Yeah, they'll cast suck. And I heard if it's it's going to be a short match, is what I hear, because she is hurt. Um, Do I want to take Storm here? I will not. I'll take Cater. Okay. I just don't want her to I don't want Outcast to lose. the title at all. I know. I think it's possible. To, I, again, I don't know how hurt Hater is, but there is talk that she is not able to really defend this fully that's okay so we'll see um next we get adam cole chris jericho and the unsanctioned match um i took cole because i don't see this feud needing to continue past this unless kyle riley comes back and uh <laughs> we get a trios match even so maybe kyle can give cole an assist and he'll still get the win but cole's still fresh in this comeback and jericho has nothing to gain from a win here and but i think it would damage cole so regardless if you think the feud's gonna end or not i think cole would only really get hurt by a win here i think cole wins because of the story it's it's for his wife right like basically yeah. it's to avenge her being attacked and it's I think, essentially a family story kind of i thing. think he has to sort of get that justice mm-hmm. and then they can go wherever they want from yeah. there so i think it's cool as but well i would hope it ends soon because me too i don't i don't want more of this and we know there's a history of jazz feuds running exactly that, far that's, too that's, long. The, that's the fear yeah yeah because i mean last year jazz from the anarchy in the arena and then the feud ended like at the end of the year maybe exactly like it was literally the whole year um so next, speaking of Anarchy in the Arena, we my probably most my most anticipated match of the show. I, it would have been the four way, but I think this might have exceeded it because mm-hmm. Anarchy in the Arena was really fun last really year. Fun. But this is a better story in it. Yes. So that's like it's like match plus story. Yep. Mm, you know. Um. So we got Elite versus Blackpool Combat Club, Anarchy in the Arena. Um. So I've absolutely loved this dude. I just want to say by far my favorite story they've done in a while. Like I think just good. like when they really put everything into it and like that when they're like um like when they put everything into it and it's like an elite storyline they think like, they really knock it out of the park because yep. like hangman's title win storyline was awesome too like the whole when hangman and kenny were teaming that was awesome too like that was awesome. when they really just put all their effort into like an elite centric storyline they really knock it out of the park and i you can say what you want for like the elite being on tv a lot but like it it really is their best stuff yeah i, I don't and necessarily want to love them but they're I, they deliver I, I love this um and i think it's fairly obvious it's also building to an elite win here i could however see the argument for blackpool winning here so the elite get their win back in blood and guts but i feel like the elite not winning here would suck the win of this kind of right and so i think they should win plus if you want to give blackpool win doesn't blackpool winning blood and guts make more sense because yes. that's much more fitting for them and well, then you and could this... also have like a brutal display for like the finish like you know how mjf kind of like taunted throwing jericho off the cage something like that obviously not the same but like something brutal because they're like the bullies or whatever you and know? they can argue that this anarchy whatever is a match for amateurs and it's not you know what i mean right Go and, that route. and they can challenge them the blood and guts because that's like a real like you can't run away match, we're locked right? in a cage exactly yeah. and it's only like submission submission like they can only like beat them when they when blackpool actually gives up or something so i yeah. think that and you can chuck in takesh and abushi if you want i agree i think i think it's setting up for elite to win this anarchy i could be wrong but mm-hmm. it, i i think i also am taking I think the elite it's much more built to that um and then our last one is the four pillars four way for the AEW and title everyone knows our picks on this already which, yeah we've said it is, a million times so it's mjf darby allen sam mcgraw and jungle boy um, the story's been great as well. If it weren't for the current faction war, this would be my favorite current thing going. Um, but um, I think they've done a good, a uh, really good job of hyping the possibility of one of the other pillars thinking with the title. But I think it's obvious it'll be MJF. Agreed. The title reign's not ending yet, but I think they've done a good job at least like making everyone else credible enough so that like it's not like a complete wash, but yeah. it's, it still is. And I don't even care because I'm interested in a, a four way between these guys in a main event of a pay per view should be an awesome match. So. I, I don't always need the result in no. doubt, right? If you do a good enough job with everything else. If I was going to pick anyone for runner-up, that would be Darby Allen. 
Yeah, I, it's going to be MJF. Yeah. I'm pretty positive on mm-hmm. that. Agreed. For sure. Uh, you said you do have some figuring this bit. week? All right, well, that's going to wrap up the previews then, and we'll end this episode. Jack does have an update from the world of wrestling figures that we call Figuring It Out with Jack. Um, so there were some leaks that just went out a little while ago, and so one of them is particularly in, of interest to me. Which is? Um, so they just put out the Elite Greatest Hits 2, which was like, they do, I think they're doing one per year, which is like, that's like kind of the updated re-releases. Yeah. Um, so that was the one with the Cash and Seth Rollins with the black and gold, mm-hmm. which was the wrong choice. And they had like <laughs> the blue tooth and whatever. So there's leaks for Greatest Hits 3, which is a little weird because there's eight figures instead of six, which is the usual, but... So two of them are weird. They're they're re-releasing a couple of the Hollywood figures. Yeah. Um, which is Rock as Scorpion King. Of course. Uh, and then Roddy Piper as John Nada. They're re-releasing that one again. As who? John Nada. Oh, is that the guy from they the live. movie? That's a good movie. Yeah. So it's they're re-releasing those, and I think like part of it, it's like their greatest hits. So it's like like really sought after figures, but also ones that like weren't distributed well. Yeah. So that's kind of what the case is with some of these and this is just leaked so obviously i don't know yet but then also there's bruce beefcake which is supposedly supposed to be the legend figure he had which i think was like dream team beefcake mm-hmm. pre-barber <laughs> right yeah um our truth which i don't know which one that'll be um bray wyatt which i also don't know um the natural disasters which both of them which will be um which has to be those remember when they used to always have the then now forever at least yes yeah. and they had those i yeah. think we see them before we yeah. saw them Somewhere. A long time ago. Um, so there's those. And then Seth Rollins is in this set as well. Nice. So it has to be the white one. They have to they can't they can't shun me twice. They can't they can't they can't Never do it know. again. The it Hulk. has to be the white one. They have everyone wants that. Yeah. They made they made everyone. a mistake the first time, okay? And so this is supposed to be around December twenty twenty three or like next year, so it'll be a while anyways, but oh well. Uh then there's championships on two packs. The next set is leaked, which is the fifteenth one, I think. And um, so they're doing Roman Reigns versus Logan Paul. So Logan Paul got his first basic, mm-hmm. which will be from Crown Jewel 2022. Um, they should it should have it should come with both belts, which would be cool. But cause then you can get the finally get the Dota title with Roman side plates, but they probably won't because they always include one belt. Even with like um, they did like a RK Bro one of these, and they only include one tag title. Lame. Um, they got Stone Cold versus Triple H. Speaking of tag, I couldn't think of any one-on-one title match these guys have had. But then I thought you could do a two-man power trip one and still do and give them a title because mm-hmm. they do tag teams in these sets sometimes. Um, and you could give them like a world title, or IC title, or a tag title. You could. Um, because that and then Kevin Owens versus AJ Styles, which would probably have to be one of their U.S. title matches from 2017, which I think they had at Backlash. I know they have one at Battleground and then SummerSlam, which is that was remember the weird one where Shane McMahon was referee. Not really. And then you kept doing, they kept knocking into him, and then you kept like. Interesting. Yeah. Good old Shane, I miss him. Nope. Just kidding. That was awesome. Though. I do not. Mania was awesome though. Mania was awesome. Remember. What? Shane. Yes, amazing. Uh, awesome. <laughs> he might it might be a while before he's back. I yeah. guess. Uh, and then Basic 141 was leaked. Uh, Seth Rollins again, Ray, but it's a basic, so I don't care. And um, Lesnar, Belair, Rock, and Ellie Knight first figure. Hey, and good he'll for get him. A chase, yeah, so, yeah. I watched. You were watching a compilation of his. Yes. Yeah, I just found that randomly <laughs> on Instagram. It's funny. Uh, and then Ellie Knight's the chase, so there'll be two Ellie Knights. Nice, yeah. doubling up. And then they revealed a AW revealed a Target exclusive Adam Cole fig, which is a repaint of his first AW figure. So instead of white logos, it's got the red. I. St- don't like it it's solid like the gear is solid but just i think his formula is weird they need to kind of tweak it yeah it looks weird but like and it's got the red packaging i would get this if i could keep it in the package and then i'd put it on here because like adam cole but i wouldn't use that because it's a little funky looking it is um then we have so they because the double or nothing tomorrow they got they're doing one of their fan fest thingy majiggies mm-hmm. um so aw stuff and things they <laughs> just they showed um like new prototypes for sorry new models of like um unmatched seven which we already saw but like it's got that really nice thing like i really like the phoenix it's super nice yeah it's that looks got the nice. white gear it's like it's got a nice it's got like a soft goods hood like rubber jackets are yeah that looks garbage nice. but that's actually nice it's got pack and it's like he's got the he's got three heads and two of them one of them's normal one of them's eye patch and one of them's blindfolded remember that oh yeah 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 oh yeah he was blindfolded for a bit mm, there's a sting 
Uh, there's a Dan Housen with like, so the main one's got like the big coat on, which is meh. Mm-hmm. And then there's the uh, forgot about him the too. Chase, which is like sure this, yeah. Oh, did did he get a jerk? He did. Yeah, right. In the tag title match, right? Oh my yeah. god, he challenged for the tag titles. Correct. Uh, there's two Thunder Roses, but we're gonna skip past that because eh. <laughs> uh, LJ and Punk also gonna skip past that because eh. Uh, then there's a ringside exclusive Dan Housen in like a different gear. He's uh, it'll have like special packaging. It's, oh, that's really cool. If you look at the packaging, see it's got like one of those Velcro things, and it'll open up and see it's got like the cape. A cape, yeah. That's kind of cool. Yeah. I like the packaging. That's cool because like my Star Wars Darth Maul had like it's got the Velcro. That's kind of cool. It's kind of got like a gray and black tights look. It's it's all right. Uh, they showed Bunny and Butcher and Blade, which they all look okay. Um, Butcher looks a little weird. Like I'm, their head skins have been kind of missing lately. I feel like they kind of need to pick stuff up again. Right. A little bit. Um, where's Hold on, I need to find. So they had they had, they revealed a bunch of ringside exclusives. Um, oh, there's they showed um Arrival fourteen. There's okay, so they got the acclaimed, which looked pretty nice. Uh, they, these are just like renders. It's in a video, but uh, acclaimed and oh, and Billy Gunn, nice. Okay, Amazing. That looks interesting. Oh, Ricky Stark. Ooh, FTW title. Nice, nice, nice. I'm getting that. Oh, Tony Storm with the new women's title. Nice, 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 nice. Oh, Swerve looks nice. It's in like that purple and orange gear. I think he had Keith Lee. It looks okay. Anyways, back to other stuff. They had um, so they always do like they sometimes do shop exclusives. Yeah, it's usually a repaint figure with a just with a cloth shirt. But the they do they got a Jade Cargo. And it's actually just a repaint with different hair. But it's got the TBS title, which is huge by the way. Gigantic. Yeah, like that's it's a bit of an issue with the TNT title too. But it looks more noticeable in a women's style because the figures are generally not exactly as, not, not as big, right? right. Uh, there's a Hookhausen two pack, which I feel like is that the same Dan Housen? That's a just a chase no no way they did that that's no way i gotta gotta look at this folks it is no way oh wait oh my god it's the same no way okay so i think the danhausen in the two pack with hook is the same as the chase danhausen which is dumb because then you don't have to get the chase to get the figure it's not that exclusive unless you it's then it's only rare if you're a collector because it's like oh you got the actual chase Mm -hmm. you know but like, if you just want the figure, it's no difference. Uh, then the rings I exclusive hook, which is just white and black shorts. It's not really interesting. And I was just showing you they had a new TNT champion, Sammy Guevara, because at Comic Con I got the TNT champion rings I exclusive Cody, mm-hmm. and he came with like the the prototype TNT title. Remember the yep the one that you love so dearly. Yes. And that was the silver and purple Cody from when he won the title. So then this is like a purple and white Sammy like that. And he's got Miro's TNT title and then the black strap one. I so that that's pretty cool. I'll definitely try to get that at some point. Maybe maybe next Comic Con, <laughs> <laughs> a year from now. Yeah, um. Then I showed you the one I really like. They have a blood and guts. Their next bloody figure is Wheeler Yuta. Yep. And I believe he's coming with the ROH Pure title. Not only that, but the updated one, which I think is really cool. What was the match? Oh, he had with Mox. That was amazing. That right? was it. I think. I yeah. think that's the one. That was crazy. And like, I think it's cool that they're including an ROH title. Not only that, but it's it's an updated one too. Like, right. Um, it has to be because it doesn't look like the original pure title so that, i think that's a really cool thing because i don't they, i think that's the first time they're doing that so nice that's very nice very very nice and i mean i'm I'm gonna assume they're doing more stuff as i'm going but like that's all we, oh that is interesting there's this one more exclusive jericho that looks really weird the face doesn't i don't love it i'm not gonna it's so skinny i'm not gonna lie it is weird I'm not gonna lie with you. I thought purple. I thought Matt Taven for a second. I was gonna. Uh, I was about to laugh. For me immediately. Pre-ordered. I was about to laugh real hard. Oh no. They've disappeared. Oh, of course. Actually, I'll buy it. The face paint looks nice. Jeff Hardy. I I will get it for the face paint. Um, I I like Jeff Hardy figures because Jeff Hardy figures don't drive. <laughs> that is true. They do not. Um, that is everything that they gave me. So that's a lot. We gotta, it was decent. What do you, what do you guess the time on this chunky episode uh, is? One fifty. Nice try. Mm-hmm. 232 and ticket. Okay, I thought I was gonna. I thought, I thought it wouldn't be that long. And next week, unless we do something to get all these, like, how are we gonna throw three pay per views in there? But, anyways, uh, we just do AEW and call it a day. We'll figure it out. But, yeah, so, uh, <laughs> yeah, we'll I don't see. know if we'll do any special episodes or anything. We'll see. Well, there's a lot of wrestling to watch, but we'll definitely be back next Saturday for episode 150. It's a milestone or something. But, anyways, uh, appreciate any time you took out of your week to listen to us talk about wrestling. Hopefully you're back joining us next week for 150 where we'll talk about all of these pay-per-views a little bit at least probably and all our regular stuff. 
So we hope to see you then. And until then, take care.